unmute everybody there we go everything should be on do a little volume else, probably better off mute. <laughs> test, test. do that one more time cal test test there i got you okay i was playing with your volume the other test, day test. and uh i got you can you hear me that, 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 I can uh, hear it, yeah. Woohoo! get a whole turned right. off here muted your chat so i can't uh, or muted your channel so i can you muted myself. the chat all right, alerts. I'm gonna put them on the top. There we go. Perfect. I got the host, by the way. It didn't show in the video, but yeah, I heard it uh, come through. I just didn't see it. Nice man. So what's going on? Oh my God, sweet. Welcome. If anybody is here already, who knows? Uh, we are playing UPM Gaming D and D Five E Custom uh, Homebrew Campaign from ten till one on Sunday because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> 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 oh, there's lots to do. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Always stuff to do. Oh, man. So it was good in the good last... Good to be here, though. <laughs> it's very good to be here, man. We're having fun. In the last one, we did... We described the campaign world and everything. Um, but we'll go through the rooms we did again of what happened last week, of course, if I can remember. <clears throat> ah. Aha. We had gone from... Which one will let us down there? It helps when it's in order. <laughs> I know that we went into the hallway uh, where the statue of Raywind was, and he had the magical walking stick. Um, and Clairval was able to negotiate with the uh, spirit to grant us passage through the hallway uh, without incident, which was great and earned him inspiration. Um... From that, we came into, I believe, down into the place where we saw the men in the crystal. We had the two guys in the crystal, and we were deciding if we should free them or look about. 
We did a little bit of both. We did a little bit of both. <laughs> We looked about and uh, determined the room beyond was destroyed and there was a gigantic door and something was in there. Uh, we saw signs of combat and we read a journal uh, explaining that there was two guys in crystal, one to be trusted, one not to be trusted, and we only had enough potion to set one free. After we searched around in there, came back, set one free. It happened to be Gans, who we met, and uh, he helped us with some information on the beast, which was a couple rooms over. Uh, we. Mr. Jackson lured him into the main combat room where Kylo and Gans pushed over the Tower of Stone onto him, severely damaging him, knocking him down in the process. And Clarabelle dropped the net from above to keep him there, at least for a round or so, um, dealing some damage. We all took some nice hits on him. And then he started to flee. And I think Jackson got him pretty good. And then Kylo got the finishing piercing shot. Oh, no, I think uh, Clarivelle actually exploded yeah, his mind I after I hit him with the arrow. Oh, was it? Okay. Just the last two hit points or something like that is... Uh, yeah. is uh, Psychic damage. Psychic Brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. With the arrow stuck in his head. <laughs> and he blew up and, <laughs> and fell And then mine. a whole bunch of people lost channel points. <laughs> they bet against us. That was, that was true. <laughs> Never bet against the party. However, Nin won a bunch. <laughs> yes, I did. Woo! So he can tell you to hydrate all night long and uh, <laughs> wear, the, wear the cop shades all night long. <laughs> no. <laughs> Too bad it isn't specific to a, a game you're playing or a yeah. thing you're streaming. Well, that's where we are. So we're just right picking up after the fight. The beast just went down. Uh, we're out of yeah. rounds. There is a little bit of a, a fire. Not an overwhelming mm -hmm. fire, but there's a fire started in the room beyond on one of the wood wooden trellises by Jackson. Um, as he used that to lure the beast back in the main room, and that's where you guys are. For a fish man, he's pretty much a pyromaniac. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason they I'm don't not. Have water, they don't have fire under the water, so oh. he's a little excited about it. <laughs> I have made fire. <laughs> I have made fire, and now I use it to destroy you. Gans is happy. He, he just, Gentlemen, you've destroyed the beast. I cannot believe it. He, you see him come down, walk down through the rubble, just in the in the second room there, not the beast lair, but the the room you were in fighting, and he'll he'll take a moment, kind of to collect himself and and mourn for his party, which is uh, dead, which have all been oh, killed. Dead. A little bit over here, a little bit over there. <laughs> there the all have come down to the dungeon looking to free him, and and did not get to free him and died in the process. Uh, so he's going to spend a little bit of time to reminisce on that. Well, you guys do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. But it's a little hurtful that he didn't think we could do this. I can't believe he did this. <laughs> kind of commentary on our ability as a party, at least our appearance party. Well, you might uh, think oh, yourselves a little, a little hurtful. <laughs> Just because we look like a mess, who knows? <laughs> a little stronger, a little more wise than his other party. Ragnar will uh, walk around the room, look at the the damage done, and check his Jackson, weapons. What's the situation of that uh, room that you lured the thing from? Yeah, I should probably go put those fires out. <laughs> yeah, because I think that's where we have to head through next, because there's no other way through here unless we open this giant door, uh, but the beast behind it doesn't sound very happy. Before I go, I want that little creature that we killed that had cypher-like arms, right? Little creature? The big creature? Hey, the little creature? Oh, that's, yeah, that's that's huge, right. man. <laughs> <laughs> this is you call a little creature? What's a big creature? <laughs> you don't want to know. You make you make your way over there, because you, you were going to take a bite out of him anyway. You make you way. You make your way through the giant arch and into the next room where the monster is. There, he's dead on the ground. His back to you, his face down. Um, he has the giant scythe-like arms out, um, and his back is exposed. And you can see a couple things on his back. There's a big patch of crystal, red crystal, almost like what Gans was locked in, uh, growing out of his back. His back. Mm -hmm. Something you couldn't see before. And then, of course, his scythe arms are out. Wait, and his head is. Gans is, nearby? Gans is in the. Yeah, he's in the other room. Can we all see this, or is it just uh, Jackson? I can see it. 
Uh, the creature, Jackson, uh, Kylo can see it because you shot into the room. And yeah, Clairvel shot into the You guys can all see it, yeah. He's, he's not That's too awesome. far into the room. Hey, Fastest is here. Yeah. yeah Fastest. <laughs> um, so, Gans, did, did that thing put you in crystal or not? Because it's got crystal on its back. Oh, yes. That was the, the beast for sure. That crystal, okay. it's part of the beast. It was his natural ability. As I said, he had a gaze attack. If he would have used it at us, you know, one of you may be locked in there forever. Thankfully, we got him very quick, and that wasn't the case. But that, that growing out of his back, he looks at it for a moment. Uh, I'm no wizard. Uh, I'm the Nora Smith. But it may be useful. Maybe we could harvest that for something. Kind of looks over to Tessa. She'll go, yeah, it could be useful for something. We could make it into... I'm sure a weapon with an ability similar. I'm surprised Tess Tess was grabbing some jewelry, you know, sell it at the local market. (laughs) Maybe a necklace? I don't know. Make a nice nice tea set out of it, a nice crystal tea set. I'd like to go ahead and try to harvest some some dream (laughs) catchers. You got to try to take the arms? What are you going to use to to get the arms off? One of the freaking battle axes. (laughs) Taking its arms? <laughs> I'm not helping you carry those. Those things are huge. <laughs> All right. Well, use, one. using a battle axe to take off uh, large creatures' scythe arms that are probably the length of a ship, um, <laughs> small ship, uh, you're going to do a hell of a mess. So you're going to be chopping at that thing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nightmare. It's going to be you know black, gooish blood all over the ground. It's going to be jaggedly cut off. Uh, but it'll come off. It's way taller than you, the entire scythe, scythe arm. Where's my reference photo? <laughs> Do I still have that? I don't know if I still got it handy. Well, he's doing that. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Press and I will attempt to... Uh... There's you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is... It's ginormous. Okay, yeah, that's huge. That's much bigger than I pictured. But you can Wait, break you the end of it off. Of it? Yeah. <laughs> Take the tip. Yeah, just like four just feet of <laughs> All right, you just well, he's doing that. that. Tess and I will attempt to, with a bit more precision and care, mm. attempt to remove some of the crystals off its back. Okay. What do you want to use? Uh, I'll use my dagger, mm-hmm. uh, rapier, and any other uh, tools that Tessa may have as well to help with this. Okay. All right. Go ahead, roll survival for this. Survival, okay. You want me to roll anything for that arm? No, you got it. <laughs> nice. Nice team. See, he's using precision to get in there and carefully remove and keep and, uh, you know, as, as best shape he can. You just battle axe smash <laughs> all over your face. You don't care to get the edge of that Jack- thing. Jackson smash. Jackson smash. <laughs> all right, you were able to harvest that. Because you got a 19 and you did so well, I will give you uh, two usable chunks. So the chunks are pretty big. Uh, maybe about that that large, so a couple inches big, um, and you're able to get two working sets of them. Nice. Two sets of crystal. Yeah. Matching earrings. <laughs> Matching <laughs> earrings. He's gonna put them into his. Uh, he's gonna make a, an inlay on his bow. So That's Jackson right. is hacking away at the, the arms. Uh, Tessa and Claire Val are taking the crystal off the back. Kyloak, uh, what are you doing? Ragnar is kind of walking around. He's just looking here and there. I'm just hanging out, cleaning my cleaning my weapons, waiting for them to... Cause okay. There wasn't anything other in the, in the room other than that big door, right? Uh, in the... the fighting... Polishing his spear. <laughs> <laughs> in the, in the, the fighting room, the room we fought in? Yeah. Right, no. Yeah. You got most. You got everything in there. Yeah, I'm just kind of uh, getting ready to get underway while you guys are doing your your stuff with your creepy monster. Oh, he's waiting for his Dark Souls 3. All right. (laughs) So they get their stuff together, and everybody kind of, whatever you want to regroup at or whatever you want to do, everybody's set from there. One more bad idea. What's the next room look like? Ragnar will walk into the room along with uh, Gans. He'll come in as well. Uh, Kylo, if you're coming in, and everyone will... 
will be in the main room. So in the in the room where the creature was, it's a very large room, has very high ceilings, 20 foot tall ceilings, and goes off into darkness beyond 60 feet. There was wooden trellises or arbors, whatever you want to call them, that stretch up with vines coming down, and there is some three foot tall little block walls with water gardens in them throughout. Some of the water gardens are broke, having water on the floor as well. Uh, the first arbor has some significant flame going on one of the beams. All right, I'll walk over to Jackson. Hey, Jackson, you got a little bit of, uh, like, smuts on your face there from whatever that was you ate. <laughs> I'll wipe and lick my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, uh, you put these fires out so we can move further into the room? I'll start mm -hmm. casting presentation trying to put the fire out. All right. <clears throat> what can you do with that? Wind or uh, water? Can Both? snuff out flames. Oh, okay. Take the flames beyond off the... the uh... Uh, beyond those trellises that were on fire, is there any mm -hmm. kind of... Uh, did the creature have any kind of horde or anything? Uh, you will eventually... Where, where do you want to go? There was basically uh, center, bottom, top, we're going to call it, as three paths into the room that were divided by the trellises and the water gardens. So as you so look up, three, you look up and you walk... Level? Oh, you're, three levels. Okay. Uh, no, not three levels. Um, oh. Uh, the room itself, I guess, would be divided into three. If we're looking eagle eye down, down, like top down, there would be a bottom path, a middle path, a uh, top path. Yeah, kind of divided okay. by the trellises and the water gardens. Kind of arch, like entrances to different yeah, sections. Yeah, okay. not, uh, not blocked off, but if you walked in a straight line, you know, kind of thing. I'll take a look in the center one. All right, so as you walk through the center one, you start looking up. Again, you're looking at a large wooden trellises that go up significantly high, 20 feet in the air. Um, and are blocked by up these. Up and down? Because I don't want to step on a trap. No, nothing. Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a rope. <laughs> but <laughs> no, you should. As you look up, you can see the vines coming down from wooden boards way up above. Way up above, there's like wooden slats and the, the vines are hanging down. Um, as you go forward and you're, you're looking about, you can see something shining in the distance. Because you have 60 foot vision. So you get a good, a good ways in. And then at the far end, you can see a... Uh, um, lack of a better term, a term, a bunch of debris, wooden debris, and something metal uh, reflecting the far-off torch light from Clairval's torch. What's everybody else doing? I think we should all stick together on the same path. Okay, everybody moving down the center together? Yeah. All okay, right. As we get closer, I'm going to just, I'm going to cast Detect Magic. Okay, uh, Detect Magic... I gotta make a call on something. There's uh, another, another slot here. I'm gonna say that. Mm, it's a 30 foot, uh, looks like radius. 30 foot? Okay. Vision, vision and what is VNS? Is it vision and. Uh, sense? Verbal, somatic. Uh, oh, verbal, yeah. yeah. And verbal, somatic components. Yeah. Okay. Verbal, uh, stock, okay. somatic is moving your hands. Yeah. Okay. M is material. Yeah, you have to have material to cast. But we, we use a bag of materials. doesn't matter. Make, your way, make your way down. You have your detect magic. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> magic is visible to you, Auras. You're making your way down. Ahead of you doesn't detect magic. The, the, the object itself, whatever it is, is not radiating magic. But looking around and moving, you have uh, passive perception. You can catch an aura above you. In an, well, it's 30 feet. So. Uh, is, okay, how, low, how high was the ceiling? 20 feet? 20 feet. Is it, it, is it beyond the ceiling? Uh, no. Or is it in, there, no. in this room? So as the, tr as the trellises go up, see, right, yeah. uh, they stop yep. before the ceiling because they're wood and they have wooden slats. Something up there radiates magic about halfway down. Okay. How sturdy are these trellises? Pretty big. Let's use lumber knowledge. Four by fours here. <laughs> four by four <laughs> posts to construct these. Lagged in and place, the of course. The fire didn't, uh, fire didn't scorch them? Just at the very front. He, at the very, very front, he had some fire armor. But there's, there's many of these posts as you go. Supporting the a cli top. climbable position. Yes. Uh, passively, I'm not even going to make your roll. Passively, you can find a climbable position. You could go up, okay. pardon me, a part of the post towards uh, some bracing and climb from there if you wish. I, I will uh, uh, slowly make my way up. As to not, because there's no reason to hurry. Mm -hmm. Either do climb or acrobatics, whatever you want to do as you're going up. Uh, okay. Eighteen with athletics. Okay, eighteen. All right. So Kylo kind of diverts from the path and starts squirreling up 
uh, part of the arbor there in the distance. 18, he's going pretty good. <clears throat> you see him start climbing about 20 feet in the air. Anybody want to do anything at that point, or just let him climb? Do we? What am I doing? Oh, I saw something something shiny up here. I'm going to check it out. I just want to see what it is. <laughs> All right, so they're waiting for you. They're calling up to you. Yeah, you your... might be ready, need to be ready to catch him if he drops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Jackson will pull his shield from his back and hold it out like a dinner plate. <laughs> Land there. Oh, this story. <laughs> <laughs> Make your way up all the way to the top. Get up to the top to a part where you have to grab and pull yourself up. <clears throat> With an 18, you're fine. So you grab the top, pull yourself up, and you're kind of uh, laying on top of these slats. You're just a couple feet from the roof. If you kind of kind of squatted, you know, you can feel the roof above you, and you can see out clear across the room. There's nothing blocking your vision because uh, you're on top. So you can see all across the entire top of the room. <clears throat> and one thing you see just up ahead is a body. A body of, it looks like a dwarf. Uh, he is in, um, looks like a breastplate and some chain pants or whatnot. And he's laying dead up on the trellis. Hey, Ragnar, I found your mom. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me scurry a little co closer and uh, take a look. All right. <clears throat> Make your way over to the uh, dead dwarf and you noticed looking at him Ooh, what should I give you for this this is interesting um hmm what knowledge do you have like like, like um <clears throat> for my class or for yeah what uh, background and what were your knowledges as in skills um skills were uh beasts natural explorer is that what you're talking about? Yeah. And you oh you were the folk hero, folk. right? Primeval awareness. Okay, at this point I'm gonna folk, folk hero, I've got Fey Ancestry. Because of what it is, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you a direct, but uh, you see the dwarf laying there, uh, like I said, in a breastplate, which it looks abnormally shiny. Looks shinier than uh, the current metal uh, on your companion's armor and stuff like that. Um, the chain parts of what he's wearing look standard and whatnot but the breastplate looks exceptionally well made and made out of a different type of metal a different type of material it's very shiny um next to him the thing that was radiating the aura is another uh potion vial it is a dark blue potion vial that's what was radiating the, the magic mm -hmm. yeah. not the armor okay not the armor. uh yeah i'll grab the i'll grab the potion all right um is it one that I'm familiar with or no? It actually, it looks similar to one you found in the other room down below. In the other room where you fought the beast, uh, when you were collecting various objects, you found one of these as well. Uh, you didn't do anything with it. You just took it at the point, which is fine. It's a blue potion? It blue. is a dark blue. Dark blue potion. Potion. Dark blue, okay. <clears throat> now the creature, uh, not creature, the dwarf himself has a uh, war hammer, his armor, uh, a simple... Looks like adventure bag that's been torn apart. A lot of stuff is missing, but there's a couple rations in there. Okay. If I uh, if I drop it down, mm -hmm. drop the the body down. Drop the whole body down. <laughs> um, is it gonna is it gonna damage the armor? Um, I guess you don't really have a background to 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 tell that, but um, it doesn't look if like it was leather. I could tell, but it's it's metal, so I don't. I, uh, you get the impression it's not going to damage it from that height. It doesn't look like that impact would, would severely damage it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, look out below, guys. I'm going to drop something down. We can loot it if you want. Uh, we can check it for more information, maybe. Um, I, I dropped the, the body down okay. as best Push I the can. body down in between the slats. Uh, <laughs> Jackson, you see this thing coming down. You going to try to catch? Sure. What do you want me to roll? <laughs> do decks. Catch the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight decks? Yeah, do decks. It'll be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Don't catch it with your trident. Get out of the way. Don't catch it with your trident, all right? <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> Just don't get hit by I it. I love it. He <laughs> runs forward trying to catch a thing with his shield. He's wobbling all over the place, of, you know, <laughs> left, right. No way to get it. It comes down and hits, like, the edge of his shield, flipping it out of his hands. The bones go all over the place. Part of the skeleton rolls away. The head's off somewhere. Who knows where? <clears throat> but it's on how the ground you, how below. How are you a defensive fighter? And, <laughs> and you have horrible dexterity. <laughs> Armored up to shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the I'm skeleton. Is... Brick, <laughs> it's on the ground before you. Okay. Um, was there anything else up here when I moved the body? Was there anything? You looked around up there. Looking for or 
Right? That was all you saw up there, yeah. Nothing. Okay. No. 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 Was there any traps up here or anything? No. Uh, not that you've discovered so far. Okay. Um, let's do a perception up here. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen? Yep. Okay. Fifteen, I'm going to give you, not far off from where the dwarven body was, uh, you will see another leather bag hanging down over the slats in the distance. You don't see any traps, anything like that, but near the back of the room, as you make your way to the back of the room, you can find uh, another leather satchel, so to speak, amongst the slats. Well, I'll grab the leather sash. All right, reach out, grab it. Uh, just take it for now. Yeah, take it for now. Okay. Make my way back down. I want to. We want to investigate what's going on with this All right. dwarf. Uh, what did you use to get up? Acrobatics. Yeah. Just roll once to see if you get like a a one fall on your butt. <laughs> get the shield well, I got, ready. I got a, I got an eight plus a six. I'm oh, six. all right. <laughs> I come, the disappointment in his voice. Oh, okay. <laughs> come tumbling down to a great <laughs> land. Great landing and praise the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna check out the dwarf's body. I wanna I'm gonna do a medicine check to see if there's any like clear wounds on him. Like mm -hmm. he's up there in the middle of the rafters, right? Like mm -hmm. what yeah. the hell killed him up there? Yeah, so I'm a bunch of blood force tra tra drama after he fell, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so on a medicine check, oh there we go. Uh, 23. All right. You go over and inspect what's left of, of the body. Uh, you can determine that there was a lot of damage done to one of the legs. Uh, looks like probably he <clears throat> got slashed or bit or gotten involved with the fight with the beast. Had able to climb up there very wounded and bled out over time. Okay. So I'll relay that information to the rest of the party. Okay. So he's probably hiding up there and just bled out. Yeah, bled out. In fear, alone in the dark. I don't ask the cats if he looks familiar. No. You say, uh, that dwarven skeleton looks like every other dwarven skeleton I've ever seen. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> the armor, though, no, I do not recognize the armor. Doesn't look like one of my former party members. Claire Val, you're pretty good with, uh, uh, insignias and that type I'm pretty of thing. Good with Local history. Uh, what do you take from that armor? Does it, uh, does it look like right. from a near, nearby a history urban tribe? Or I've got history, arcana, religion. Um, like I'm jack of all trades. Yeah, I know. Everything. So we'll use what history in this case. Uh, just all being right. your own personal history. I'm okay. sorry, that came through as your perfect <laughs> It is mithril. It is a mithril breastplate. Ooh. I took the Ooh. idea that it was not magic. I don't believe it is magic, but it it's is not. a special material. So. Yep. So I suppose, the dwarf, I suppose the dwarf could have told us that. Oh, Ragnar said at the back, just kind of hands in his pockets. <laughs> He's pouting after you called it his mother. Yeah. <laughs> rude. That wasn't in game. That was. <laughs> sure, it wasn't. <laughs> Oh, did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you said it had a warhammer and a couple other things. What, uh, what's the warhammer? Warhammer doesn't look uh, amazing in any way. It's just a standard warhammer. It's taken some damage. You could use it effectively. It'd be fine. I don't want it. Hmm. <laughs> One more thing I have to carry. I was wondering if maybe Ragnar wanted it or perhaps... Um, uh, Gans, does Gans have much of a much of equipment with him? Uh, he has a rapier. He's a very uh, finesse built. Uh, oh, like rogue in the picture. Yeah, <clears throat> he will not. But uh, Rag if no one wants it, Ragnar will take the mithril <coughs> breastplate for now. Yep. All right. He will add that to the to the loot. Uh, and he, you said he had rations and that type of thing. What, what other common things were in the Yeah, I, I, I don't know what kind of shape the rations are going to be at if the dwarf has reached skeletal status. <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried about the rations. I was thinking of maybe he has some rope or something in his pack. Unfortunately, rope uh, we do not get this time. Uh, we will have some torches. We'll have a flint and steel. I'll give you a couple more all pit uh, pinions or pittance. All good things that we can use. Um, yeah. And then uh, I found I found this blue potion up there. I found another one in another room back there. I don't know what they are. Uh, maybe Tess could tell us what it is. 
Uh, yeah, she's they, familiar. They are magic of, of some sort, obviously. Hmm. She's familiar uh, with the alchem alchemical stuff. If you let her look, she will. Sure, have a look. Ooh. It's a 19 on our Kenya check, and she will identify that potion uh, in so her knowledge. Uh, I tell you, it is a growth potion. Growth? Growth. It make you bigger. Hmm. Might have been handy if we really got beat up by that other monster. Yeah, go toe to toe. Could uh, wrestle them. Godzilla fight. Yeah, go <laughs> <laughs> I might have would have been on the creature. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, and then I'm gonna just uh, I found this this other satchel up there. Um, I don't know if it was his or not, but I'm gonna open it up and uh, take a look at it while we're all together. All right. Well, everybody's there. Sure. All right. Ba, 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 ba. Give me a uh, d10. Roll, please. Four. Four? Yep. Not much left in it at this time. A couple <laughs> platinum coins, so only four. Uh, but also only a pla four platinum coins. Only four platinum coins sitting That's at the bottom. The first, it's the first platinum coins I've had. Thank you. But it also has a bracelet made out of platinum <clears throat> set with a sapphire gem. Looks very expensive. Some kind of jewelry that a nobleman would have uh, in his hoard. Probably looted from down here previously by someone. <clears throat> and I'm still being affected by... You... Sorry? Did you say everything that you found in the first bag? Like to the party or... The first bag? It was just, yeah, just the rations and the, that's the old rations that we threw out and the, the um, He's going to eat the rations. I yeah, he's not going to. He has not eaten in days. You just had a piece of that feast. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> he was wandering around down here, man. It's oh, been right, days yeah. for me. I we will eat those rations. Mm -hmm. We could have shared some food with him. <laughs> you gotta eat those nasty over. They taste dry, yeah. <clears throat> almost like sawdust. Just very, whatever's left, very dehydrated. <laughs> a lot of salt. There's some water over there on the floor if you want to wash it down. <laughs> nah, it's just a cool liquid. I don't know if it's actually water. Yeah, well, might might flavor the food more. <laughs> All um, right. I'll I was going to say some other things. Oh, yeah, I still have the magic uh, effect, magic, detect magic affecting me. That The bracelet shows no magic. No magic, right? no magic. Just a uh, high quality. <clears throat> Anything your, your party members uh, have lights up. What's that? Anything your party members are carrying lights up. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's magic. So you get the, the breastplate off the dwarf, uh, identify what killed him, you know, get some leftover stuff you found here and there. Uh, you're in the center of the room. Beast is behind you, dead. Harvested parts of him. Where do you want to go? Oh, this was the center court. Does this center area go any further? Yeah, of course. It goes to the end of the room. At the end of the room, you saw the debris, the wooden debris, and the uh, the metal gleaming in the light. Okay, let's go uh, check out that metal. All right, make your way to the end of the room. The <laughs> you see what would be, I guess, a nest, uh, so to speak. Uh, just a big pile of boards. So there's beams and boards, broken down old furniture or whatnot. GNM, thank you for the follow there. Thank you for coming by. We were playing D&D. &D. Um, and amongst this, there are bodies everywhere. Of course, skeletal bodies here and there all within the, the beast layer. Mostly bones. There's nothing put together. No armor or uh, anything at that point. Um, but amongst them is a chest. Another footlocker type ornate treasure chest. Almost near the center of the nest. Seems more attached to the floor as if it's been there and the nest was built around it. Oh, like it was there before the nest? Yeah. Okay. So there's enough stuff here. <laughs> um, everyone's high as I'm. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are chill. Yeah, we're pretty chill. <laughs> don't don't listen to Verlaine. <laughs> <laughs> Best way to play. Um, How did you know? <laughs> the holy hand grenade. <laughs> so the the um, that area is big as big as the beast. Uh yes, yeah. Okay, 
Uh, is there anything in his uh, in his nest that he's gathered, or is it just a, he's, is he just a jug order? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay, so um, let's uh, take a look at that chest. Then. All right, we're gonna make your way over, and what you see again is one of these uh, decorative chests that we've come across before. Big iron-bound chest uh, laid in with silver etching on it and whatnot. Like I said, it seems more attached to the floor. See the etching is there? Is it? writing or is it uh just scroll work basically emblem, decoration emblem or something just yeah. scroll okay. oh the, the emblem will be there you identified the emblem earlier on with the two it's ravens on the yeah yeah. Okay. Um, yeah we want to open it yes or no yeah ragnar uh, ragnar okay. says me not here me will do <laughs> <laughs> boom <laughs> all right ragnar will make his way over there and he will uh take the edge of his club and he'll kind of uh, literally poke at it and pry it the lid kind of up and down you know falls slips off he's like oh i think it's fine reach in lift the lid nothing goes off looking inside uh ragnar can see a key similar to what he's had before he had the um the ruby key the emerald key and this one it appears to be an onyx which is a just a black gem solid black gem silver key etching all over it with a solid black onyx gem Takes that out, shows it to you guys. <clears throat> if somebody wants it, or you want him to keep it. He's got all the other keys. All right, so yeah, he'll add that to add his... Add it to your key ring. Add it to right his now. jailer's key ring. Yeah. Put it on. He goes, oh my god, reaches down. You see him pull up with his two hands like this as coins spill out and just fall back. <laughs> platinum coins. Oh, the chest is full of platinum coins? Full of platinum coins. Kind of oh. reaches down. He sees something in there. He reaches down. And he tugs and he pulls it up and he's ooh tacky for me and it's a black silk button up shirt with a red dragon kind of uh, embroidered into the side looks like something from the nobleman's Fire collection <laughs> something a bard would wear <laughs> yeah. Kylo do you still got your uh, detect magic on yeah Is this magical? I think it lasts for uh the shirt has a little minutes, magical like, aura to it, yeah. A yeah, little uh, magical aura? I don't know, it's looking pretty slick. <laughs> uh, we'll run the rest for uh, a shirt that tacky. Yeah, <laughs> clear bell's got to have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ragnar, we'll uh, toss it over to you there. Tacky dragon shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to put it on? Yeah. Come on, show yeah. it off for us. Let's go. You put that on, it's beautiful. It's got the nice little nice little collar there. It's buttoned right up nice and tight. Slayer. Collar. Oh, oh nice. thank you for the subscription, Jenum. Welcome, welcome. It's got the nice red embroidered dragon down the side. It goes nice and tight, you know, grips you perfectly as if it was fit for you. You guys look over at him, and you instantly are more uh, enthralled by him. He just has like this, this magical swagger about him all of a sudden. In fairness, he always had it. <laughs> it's just more prevalent now. More prevalent. Damn, Val, you do something with your hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ragnar says, what do you want to do with the coins? Well, we should probably take some of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we want to just trade out everything we've got for platinum because we might have trouble moving that much platinum, but... No, but we could probably safely take a couple handfuls, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's a, what's a handful consistent? Well, I think it is, if I'm not wrong, let me think about this. Was it every every 50, 50 coins of the pound? Yep. Okay. That's right. Yep. <clears throat> So what would be a handful? A good, uh, good five pounds, maybe. No. Are you, are you <laughs> double dipping the hands, or are you? Uh, you tell me. You, but you, you tell me how you want to do it. How many pounds of, of coins do you want? I'm willing to take on an extra two pounds. All right. Let's <clears throat> get a hundred platinum coins. Yep. Yeah, I'd probably take. I'd probably take five pounds. Okay. <clears throat> I can fill my belt pouch. Just keep track of your carry weight. And how how much was in that? Did you say? Uh, so every uh, every fifty coins was a pound. 
fifty coins as pounds or yeah. five pounds. It's two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty. There you go. Bottom Might coins. be able to fit into a belt pouch. Uh, belt pouch, yeah. We, um, I used to go into high detail about the different size of bags, sacks, pouches, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think, I don't even remember, maybe back in Pathfinder, a belt pouch held 50 coins, I think it was only. Like, it was a little, a little leather pouch that goes on the belt. But you tell me what, what size bag or sack you wear. What size is your sack? <laughs> <laughs> Do not tell him. I do not want to know where this is going to go. Do not give him that level of openness. Man. Come on. This is role playing. Because he might tell you. Yeah, we're going to find out how tattooed it is. Aww. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> whether he whether he dip, dipped it in the blood of his, his enemy, which is killed before we were looking. Oh man, it's pierced. <laughs> not answering that. <laughs> I'd say it can hold a little bit more than the average, but okay, not up to like a hundred. Okay, all right. Well, you tell me what you want to put in there. Watch your own carry weight. That's all. I'll stuff seventy-five in there, so a pound and a half. All right, perfect. All right, <clears throat> this guys, load up on some coins out of the chest. You take the silk shirt. You guys got the key. There's not much here. You're going to leave some coin behind, but you left treasure behind before. Uh, you were... Okay, uh, lots behind. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> you were expecting to get back. Unfortunately, you can't get back. Maybe. All that stuff from the ship we yeah. left behind. Ooh, <laughs> there was a whole hull full of treasure. Yeah. Some adventurer's going to wander in there and go, oh, wow, look, they already stacked it for us. Kylo, didn't you just grab another satchel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'll fill that other satchel with... Uh, okay. That satchel was pretty small again. It just held a bracelet and a couple coins. So, you know, we'll say uh, a couple pounds in there. Another hundred coins. Sure. sure. Yeah. We're never getting out of this. We're never getting out of this dungeon to spend it. You anyways. take all the treasure <laughs> you want. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> we like Scroo Scrooge McDuck before. I die. <laughs> you know that it doesn't add any weight to you in the. Uh, oh, you might have to. The, you might have to custom put in the pounds. Another useful thing about roll twenty, but that's just me enjoying that I can count it without counting it. <laughs> I mean, I have I have a carrying capacity of uh, two hundred and seventy pounds. I'm only at ninety nine with all my hmm. equipment. Okay. <laughs> I'm strong. So I'm just strike the nine, and we're a little bitter. Strong boy. That's okay. My carrying capacity is two twenty five. Ooh. Three twenty five. Yeah, but you can't catch it. Two twenty five. Two twenty five. Two twenty-five. Okay. Jackson is weaker than I am in real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You get the treasure looted up. Start. All right. So this area yep. is this area divided from those other two pathways? Do we yeah. Need to go back. And check well, I mean, it's, it's divided. It's divided loosely. You can see from here. You can see through over the water gardens, through the vines. Like eh, some things are obscured, but you can look around using passive perception to look around. You know, uh, to the bottom of the and the top of the room. You can see near the top of the room through the vines. Uh, there's a doorway. Be on which side? Uh, be on the north. So the top top part of the 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 top room. Yeah. Okay, so anything the other? Passive perception, uh, and you may want a survival check for this. Does it look like the creature stuck to the path, or did it just move wherever the hell it wanted through here? Oh no. Um, I mean, I would give you a survival, but he was so big, it's clear he went anywhere. Okay. Yeah. And we were already actively looking for traps. Yeah, I just I don't think that we have to worry about you know like cutting through this thing would have set off anything that was able to be set off. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to look and see if I can see any more bodies. Like skeletal meanwhile, bodies? Meanwhile, yeah. Clairval, if you're looking at the debris, um, sure. can you figure out how long that beast was in here? I know it's been here at least 20 years or more. Because mm -hmm. it killed uh, the anything further than that, you're like, I I'm good, but, you know, I'm not going to be able to tell you how long these, these plants have been alive or anything no, like that. No, I mean, just a, just a rough estimate, because then we know that it's moved around a lot in here and there's probably not anything else oil. living with it. <laughs> I'll give an investigation check to see if I can come up with some miracle here. It are on the natural 20. Oh, for great sake. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't have babies. <laughs> 23 no. for an investigation check. It doesn't look like there's uh, uh, 
uh, babies or anything like that. But it's been moving around here for a long time. Uh, I guess by the, the bodies that it's killed and the, the decomposition of the skeletons with a natural 20 and whatnot, it, it's, you know, the, those have been dead 20 years. Has it been here longer? Could have been. There's no other real way to tell, I guess. Uh, like you said, without a miracle, we, we wouldn't know. But from the bot, at least 20 years, we know for sure. It's been here at the height of when this dungeon was raided, uh, and it killed the former adventurers that came through. So, Yeah, Jackson's going to look and see if there's any more dead bodies scattered around. Uh, looking around, you can see, like I said, a lot of skeletal parts in the, the nest, so to speak, the wooden nest. Um, but then most of the bodies that were destroyed and flung all about were in the previous room. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, I say we make our make our way back over to the door. Make sure that uh, if Gans was resting, that he's ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, Tess has been rather quiet this whole time too. She's watching. She's observing what you're doing, just with great interest, st staying near Ragnar, her prize. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now, none of us have been really watching her. Did she take the beast's soul or anything? Uh, you were watching her. That's, that's, that's quite true. Um, <clears throat> she was on the back with Claire Val at the one point harvesting the crystal, but after that you did lose track of her, so hard to say. Hard to say. All right. Uh, going to make your way to the top of the room. So you're going to have to get over a little water garden, do a little treading through or going around, take your time, uh, pass some vines, drop to the floor, and you're going to make your way over to a man-made door. A uh, door is not physically there. It's just an arch leading off into a dark hallway. Too small for the beast to have ever gotten through, but... You guys fit with ease. I would assume it's pretty quiet in here now. It is very quiet in here. It is beast, uh, deathly beast quiet. Uh, can we still hear the other beast? Or is it not agitated anymore? It is not agitated. It's not making any noise. Whatever it was that made a big ruckus in the left, I guess, so to speak. Oh, it left? Well, I mean, it was it banged on the door, made a lot of noise when you initially went in there. And then uh, it it didn't seem to make noise after that. I don't even remember that. <laughs> uh, so is there any noise coming from the, the, the forward hallway? No, uh, it is very quiet. Um, if you use uh, your perception to, to sit for a minute and listen and take in um, the hallway, just walk a little bit into it, you can start to smell, um, using your senses, water. Again, far off, far off smell of water. A little slight breeze again, just been naturally down here. We've had a little... A little bit of air here and there every once in a while, but other than that, pretty quiet, pretty not much uh, else going on. All right. Um, so I guess we'll start making our way down the hallway, right? Yep. Yep. Marching order. Same thing, as always, right? Same as usual. Yeah. Okay. The torch guy in the front. <laughs> Me coming up the... Well, we don't know where Gans is, but... Ah, uh, Gans. He's in the middle somewhere. He'll go in the middle with uh, Tessa because he is uh, human. And he cannot see in the dark as you guys can. <clears throat> All right, you're going to make your way down the hallway for quite some time. So you go down the hallway, starts off again, uh, stone, worked stone. This is a hallway in uh, Ravencroft's uh, basement, catacombs, dungeon, whatever you want to call it, uh, that is very carved out. <clears throat> as you go for a while, again, maybe it's the far realm, maybe it's the nature of what's down here, we don't know. But the, gr the ground becomes dirt and rock and the walls become cavernous you come to a large cavernous room natural cavernous room dominated by a dark lake of still water the shore you stand on is gravelly and you see a large arched set of silver doors with scroll like work lit by a blue light from two braziers on the far far end of the room across the lake <sighs> two tunnels go off into darkness one to the left, one to the right. This side of the lake? On this side of the lake, yeah. How far is the lake? Uh, so the lake ahead of you, if you were at the end of the tunnel going towards the lake, uh, we're going to say about 90 feet. Cross, so we can't well, see nine, the 90 Well, feet, 90 feet short to the lake. Once you hit the lake, the lake itself will, will probably be about, a, a, who knows, a couple hundred feet. Uh, but you can see the light at the far end lighting up the door in the lighting distance, the okay. give you some kind of semblance of um, er, size, I'll say. Okay. And the ceiling over the lake? <clears throat> so uh, uh, next to you, there is some natural stalactites, stalagmites that kind of form into pillars, very thin in the middle, right? 
as they go and stretch all the way up into darkness. Higher than you can see, 60 feet dark vision straight up. It's beyond that. It goes up into darkness. The water itself, of course, is pitch black because you're in the darkness. Water, any light you have reflecting just, you know, makes it look dark and black right before you. Okay, and what can we see down? Can, can we see anything down the two hallways if we, if we take a look? Looking the right and the left of the hallway, you can see 60 feet dark vision into darkness, uh, like into each tunnel, maybe just into the first couple feet of each tunnel, because there's some good distance from where you're standing to get to the beginning of each hallway. So basically, so, I said 90 feet ahead of you ashore of beach before the water. Think of that going all the way around like this, right? Like a beach, like a shore. Yeah. That at the end of that, there would be tunnels going off. 90 feet out. Yeah. Oh, on both sides. Okay. Oh, I guess you wouldn't see um, it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we can't see it. Right. We can just make. We must just be able to make out the tunnel. I'll give you a low light. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Uh, okay, so we got three options, guys. We can find a way across the lake, or we can take one of these two tunnels. See if anything lives in the lake first. Can you? Are you actually amphibious? Yes. <laughs> you gonna check the lake out? <laughs> if you'd like me to, I can. <laughs> I'm not ordering you to do it. <laughs> But if you want to, I'd like you to. You're probably a little dry being down here. Just a bit. So yeah, a little approach the lake. All right, you make your way up. Is everybody gonna go with him, or he walks alone? Um, walk together to the edge of the lake. All right, walk together to the edge of the lake. You all, all right. stand openly on the edge of the the lake on the shore. Uh, Jackson, yourself, you look towards the water and step out from everybody else. What do you want to do at that point? And then walk out about shanties. ten feet. Then use my racial ability to speak with fish. Okay, so now, they don't have to listen to me at all. Okay, you're gonna walk out. Me. He breaks the seal of the water. Water is is very calm, obviously very calm, dead calm, like a sheet of glass, just smooth. As he kind of walks out, good ten feet. As he gets about five five feet out into the water and begins to to talk in his uh, merman speak, um, there is a little bit of a shaking you can feel the shore kind of shake as something big moves in the water you can just see the edge of something come up very very large um with a uh, a deep growl from under the water flanked by at least six to twelve tentacles that come straight up then they go back down and the thing kind of goes back into the water and moves breaking the surface causing some ripples that eventually make their way from near the middle of the lake towards you just not not coming to you, you but this, right? the water. <clears throat> oh yeah, everybody sees it, yeah. You can see it back backlit back back from the yeah. Back away from the shore. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Everyone back away from the shore. Alright, everybody backs away from the shore and you can hear the lapping of tiny waves from the, the previous breaking of the, the surface. Uh just kinda Fishing. lap against the gravel. Everything seems to then go <laughs> grow quiet at that point. Uh, so we move back. Uh, I'm going to grab a rock and toss it into the water as far out as I can. You're going to throw a rock into the water? Sure. All right. So everybody looks over. <laughs> Guy Loke wants to egg the thing on and chucks the rock way out and into the middle of the water. Uh, where it hits the water, it's not even seconds before where you see some of the tentacles shoot straight up. Kind of grab at the rock that just broke the surface of the water and pull it under. Again, you hear the giant swoosh of whatever big is down there moving around. So, Jackson, can you talk to that thing? I can talk and it can understand me, but I don't speak fish. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Would you like me to insult it? <laughs> no, uh, no, don't insult it. <laughs> Unless you want to tell it you're going to eat it later. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson's mouth begins to water a little bit at the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I must taste every enemy. <laughs> this, we're coming back for this someday. <laughs> I'm eating this. <laughs> okay, so I don't think we want to go across the lake. No. I think we should probably... Uh... Try one of the tunnels first. He's life. 
man, that prediction is not going to work out so well. <laughs> <laughs> you guys saw it, right? Yes. <laughs> There's always a bigger fish. There's always a bigger fish. All right, what's your plan? <laughs> All right, so where do you want to go, right or left? Who feels lucky? Lucky left. Calamari. <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably a Kraken. <laughs> Alright, we're going left? Left? Alright, let's mm. go left. Alright, make your way across the shore and into one of the hallways. Walking down the natural cave hallway, you come to a large circular cavernous room uh, with a 10 foot tall obelisk at its center. The obelisk stands silent, surrounded by some bone and what appears to be a badly dissolved, badly dissolved armor uh, remains on the sandy floor. Vines cover the for far north wall and everything is damp in here. Well, there's a gelatinous cube in here. <laughs> How far down have we gone into it or have we not entered it yet? No, you've entered the hallway. So you went in the hallway on your left. It was a small hallway. You got to the end of the hallway and came into a natural cavernous room. Well, we went to the the whole end of the hallway. Okay. Right. So looking a bunch the, about the uh, the room, you have an obelisk at the center, right? Which is just a, a straight pillar with a, a pyramid-type roof um, <clears throat> covered in markings. And then there are some vines at the north wall on the uh, cavernous wall. The floor is sand. There is dissolved armor sand. near the edge and some bones. Near the edge of the wall. Obelisk. Obelisk. Um, what's up? Can Yes, what's on the ceiling? Oh, you look for the ceiling? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> look up to the ceiling. You can see the ceiling in here. It's not as um, high as the other room. Looking 60 feet up, you can see cavernous ceiling in here. Um, it looks pretty pretty clean, pretty clear. Nothing seemed to be hiding up there? At the... No. That's, you, you can see you got a nice passive perception. What are you, 12? 15? 12, yeah. 12. 12? Yeah. Nothing. Can I tell what... Can I make out the markings on the obelisk? Uh, how far away are you? I'll move to try and see them. Okay, just uh, give me an idea. Like, do you want to do you want to be within thirty feet? Or do you want to get right up on it? Well, I'm assuming that I'm not looking to get right up on it if I can read them from a distance. Okay, you get it from a distance, <clears throat> so you can see a series of symbols on there. You can see some scroll work, some decorative um, markings and whatnot on it. Uh, but at its apex, this one has a sun, so it has a clear depiction of a sun that is carved into the very rock all the way around the top cap, so to speak, of the obelisk. It <clears throat> seems to be the focal point. Well, the sun's new. We haven't seen any references to the sun in any of the other stuff, have we? Mm, I don't think so. Tessa, does this make any sense to you? The sun with a reference to uh, uh, the other plane? <clears throat> the other plane, she says, uh, the only thing I would know that the sun would reference would be a sun, the sun god, Kandoris. We know, we know of Kandoris? Mm-hmm. Yeah. God of the sun. Is he a good deity? Good, good deity, deity, yeah. Okay. Good deity. Um, okay, so, um, um, on all sides, like, um, how big is this this room? Uh, let's say we will <coughs> give it uh, 26, 120 feet. Is Clairvelle standing on the sand? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna kind of move around the obelisk and just see if it's the same on all all the sides. Okay. You do. You walk around in the sand on all sides. It is the same. How close do you want to get? <laughs> so good. Cams do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> so you're touching it, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we don't, it's all the same on all three sides, all four sides? Yes. Four sides or three sides? Four sides. Four sides, okay. <laughs> so um, you touch it. <laughs> all right, take a look at the guy that, that uh, is corroded there while okay. I'm going around. Okay. Um, <clears throat> does it look like... Does it look like something corroded him or he... Yeah, I don't know how to do this exactly. Okay. 
Actually, Clairville, I'll take a look at this guy. Um, and medicine check on him. Okay. Yeah, because you can. You've Ooh. got kind of medicine knowledge. I don't. Seven. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Can't tell. Too far away. Well, Get closer. That's a little rough. I did. I assume that I got closer to the body. No, you can get close to the body. You can get close yeah. to the body, but you got a seven. All you can see is yep. that the What's armor your passive insight though? has been. There's no passive insight. Passive perception. There's passive. There's, passive, perce there's yeah. a passive investigation. There's a passive insight. You're well, your passive, you passive intelligence. Oh, you mm -hmm. didn't. Eh, anyway, doesn't matter. He got close. He just saw dissolved armor and some bones. Anything left uh, of use? Oh, no, sorry. Nothing of use. Yeah, you're the DM. Yeah, I'm like, huh? Yeah, yeah, you're the DM. Yeah. Who's he talking to? <laughs> Ragnar? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to the DM. Ragnar's like, oh. Um, And there's no door in it. It's just this is the end of the, the end of the line. Nothing else here. Seems to be at the from what you've seen so uh, far. Is there uh, like a rock or something that I could pick up off the ground? I know it's sand, but is there like always something? a rock? Always a rock. Yeah. So I want to pick up a rock and throw it at those vines that are on the back wall. Okay. Fair enough. Reach down through the sand, find a rock, pick it up, give it a whoosh, chuck over to the vines. You see it <clears throat> hit the uh, hit the vines, kind of go through, and make a, a clack. Further on, it went went through the vines. So yeah. There's an opening. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. Excellent. I'll go check it out. Uh, before you go jumping in there, I'm gonna lead for torch first towards those vines. All right, bring the I've light. Of, yeah, I've heard of these things called assassin vines, and I know they don't like fire, so I'm just gonna. <laughs> I love those <laughs> things, man. I love them to death. <laughs> And make your way over with the torch. Unfortunately, here I didn't put them in, so you put the torch up and they do not react. Everything's okay. Great. They're just regular vines. All right. So I'll move them out of the way. Okay. I'm going to take one of the unlit torches. Okay. And touch the obelisk with the torch. Oh, you're still screwing around with it back in the center of the room? Yeah, okay. I'm still waiting. Still, <laughs> I'm, I'm the last guy out of the room. So. All right, so... Gans and Tessa will have to go with Clairval because of the torchlight. They're going to go to the top of the room where the vines are. Jax is at the top of the room where the vines are. Ragnar, I'll keep back with you. <clears throat> I'm on that that side of the of the office. Remember, I went around it. Okay. <laughs> As Kylo is is just just got to poke it. He's just got to poke it. <clears throat> you touch it with a uh, burned out torch, not your hand. You touch it with a burned yeah. out torch. However, as you do, <laughs> you start to see this gray liquid just come out of the cracks of the obelisk near the top uh, and kind of slime down the sides. It continues to pour down slowly onto the floor, and you have to back up not to get it on, on your boots. <clears throat> as you begin to back up, a little more and more comes out as what begins to form on the ground before you it's an ooze <laughs> you called it there Claire Val. roll initiatives what my paper nine fourteen ooh nice man what Jackson get eighteen eighteen for the first time I'm not last oh man nice uh, yes. Ooh, nice. Just for the sake of my mental picture, how far away are we from him? Three, six, you're 60, yeah, 60 feet away. You guys are 60 feet away to the to the north end of the room, we'll say. Okay. And then uh, Kylo will be, I don't know, where I pictured him on the left-hand side or the uh, west part of the room, right near the thing. Yeah, but toward the toward the opening that they went through. Seven. Oh, you'd be on the north part then. All right, fair enough. Seven. Do we have uh, seven people? Three, four, five, six. In creature, yes. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone want to play Ragnar to keep track? Because I have right. two other NPCs. Or do you want me to play him? I can play him. Or do you want to sit him out? He's a fighter, right? Yeah. I'll play him. Okay. All right. So... We're getting our numbers in order here. Mr. Jackson, you were first with the 18. 
All right, I'll go ahead and make a running start. Okay, well, you're going to have to see it first. I'm going to... Because you were uh, intent on the vines. You're looking through the vines. You're looking the opposite way. You guys are have the torch light on it, and you're looking to see what's through there. This is quietly forming on the other side there with uh, Kylo. He didn't make any noise. It pulled at his feet. He didn't yell out an alert. <coughs> okay, I yelled right. out an alert. I'm like, guys. How about guys? Wake them up. <laughs> All right. Okay, you turn around. You I'm see sure this. I'm sure Ragnar would have said something, too. Ragnar doesn't talk much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason. So it was um, Jackson... We've rested, though, eh? His, his intelligence should have worked its way back up, right? Oh, it would be up, yeah. His intelligence okay. is up. Uh, here, Very sorry, we got, we got Jackson, Gans, Ragnar, um, uh, uh, Kylok. And then... Just want to make sure I get everybody in the right order here. Uh, creature. Uh, what everybody again? Clairval. So I got 18, 17, 16, 14, 11, 9, and 6 for Tess. I can go through that again if you want, Cal, Cal for... Uh, do you want to keep track of numbers? I like to just keep track of the order, so... Okay, so um, Jackson with an 18. Okay. Gans with a 17. Ragnar with a 16. We got some good rolls. Kylo with a 14. Creature with an 11. Uh, Clairval with a 9. Test with a six. And uh, oh, Ragnar had a six. Oh, I got Ragnar twice. Ragnar, Ragnar had, had a sixteen. Tess had the 16, six. Right. Tess yeah. had the six. Yeah. Yes. Gans. Okay. Thought I was missing yeah. something, but I'm not. Turning around, seeing the trouble that is across the roof. Okay. Jackson will go ahead and start running and fire bolt. Oh, nice man. All right. So you're gonna get it within position and shoot off fire bolt. Yep, that's All a right. 17 plus 4. That's a 21. Beautiful. 17 plus 4, 21. Shoot a firebolt across the room. Starts hitting this newly formed ooze, which kind of pools on the ground, then stands kind of up, uh, for lack of a better term. You hit him square on with a firebolt, and you notice it doesn't do as much damage as you think it should. It kind of oh, hits... Oh, it does one damage, so yes, it does. <laughs> one damage. It doesn't... It just knocks it right off. All right. And as I get closer, I'll use my bonus action to summon my trident to my hand. All right, try to end in hand. Gans himself, he's back there. He's kind of looking into the darkness beyond the, the torchlight. He can only see 20 feet out with the torchlight. He says, what is it? What's there? Doesn't know. <laughs> he can't see. Ragnar. Ragnar has club and scimitar. What's Ragnar do? Ragnar's got the scimitar and the club. How close is he? He's right next to Kylo, so he'll be right next to the ooze. Okay, yeah. We're going to go ahead and try to hit the scimitar first. Okay. He has this set up different than I do. That's annoying. Yeah. I'll have to just roll through D20 for that. Roll 20, if that's what I meant. All right, so he's using the scimitar. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's, his strength is plus three. All right, so that's plus five to hit. That's a 14. 14, nice. He lashes out with the scimitar, hitting the ooze. As he hits this thing, uh, he's going to deal damage to it, essentially. How much are you giving me? That's going to be 11 damage. Oh, nice. All right, he hits it hard with the scimitar, but you notice the material of the ooze kind of sprays onto his scimitar, making it smoke. Oh, no. It looks like it's taking damage. Like it's <laughs> has a cumulus. Joel's not going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> He'll follow up angrily at that with the club. Maybe Jackson can get it off for flavor. All right. <laughs> yeah. The club is the club is not magic, correct? Nope. Okay. And that's the nine to hit. Oh, oh, a nine will get him. It's a news. It got him. That's max damage. What's the max damage? That was its max damage. Oh, it was nine? Yeah, for the club. Okay. You already hit it with both. Yep. Oh, I see. I see. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay, uh, four game references make it minus one on a piece of paper or near his sword because his sword okay. is corroding. 
Uh, Nin, mm-hmm. how long have you been playing D&D? A long time. Why? Oh, the, there was a question. Oh, nice. So I'll just put for a long time. A long time. <laughs> The club it's itself, you know, you notice the wooden club does not begin to corrode. It does not smoke. Okay. All right. Kylo, your turn, sir. You are right there. It is near your boots. You have just backed up a little bit. Uh, right next okay. to you, Ragnar has attacked with a metal weapon and a club. You notice the metal weapon had taken uh, some kind of damage that made it start to smoke and disintegrate. Um, while well, the club was fine. Okay, I'm going to uh, back up uh, as much as I can okay. uh, t- toward the opening and shoot it with the uh, shoot it with the, the crossbow. Okay. So twenty four. Twenty four. You got him. Do okay. some damage. Eight. Six. All right. Nice man. Okay, shoot him with crossbow bolt. Shoom, right into the ooze. Can't tell. It went in the ooze. Maybe it did damage. Maybe it didn't. Did it do damage? <laughs> it did, technically, okay. yes. Okay. All right, the creature itself. Creature's turn. Creature. He's moving around. The closest one to him is, unfortunately, poor Ragnar, who didn't move as the creature uh, moves around and oh, lashes, <laughs> lashes out at him. What's that? He didn't back up, no. <laughs> Kyle would be right there too, since he was the one poking the damn obelisk with the club. And the, the, he was, the but he specifically, my, yeah, he just said he backed I up. I made my move before I shot, so that's what I asked. Did you back up? All yes. right, with a nineteen, it's gonna lash out and hit uh, poor Ragnar. That's it. Ooh, dealing only two points of damage, but the acid from the creature will deal another ten damage to him. And if he's wearing non-magical metal armor, which he is... Uh, which armor is he wearing? Is he wearing the mithril or is he wearing something else? No, he he took the mithril, stored it away, but he's wearing his normal okay. armor. Um, do you have what he's wearing there, Nin? I don't have it up in front of me. I do have that in front of me. He is wearing his... does not have it listed in his freaking thing. It's okay. We know he's wearing metal armor. It could be a chain. It doesn't really matter. Well, again, we're going to put a minus one to it as the acid hits him and his, what he's wearing begins to corrode and smoke. So uh, the creature has done significant damage to his weapon and his armor at this point, as Ragnar traditionally does stand toe-to-toe. Um, Claire Val. Turn around, see this god-awful mess that Kylo has started. What have you done? <laughs> Back in the flesh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, I, I, had I can see the ooze spitting out its stuff all over everyone. Oh, yeah. Look to the ooze. Didn't your mother ever teach you it was rude to spit? <laughs> and I need a wisdom saving throw from the ooze. Ooh, 12. 12. Not going to do it. You will take one point of psychic damage and disadvantage on your next attack roll. Oh, perfect. Okay, disadvantage. All right, so again, the psychic damage tends to really uh, attack him and hurt you. So you kind of wheel back like this and then kind of come forward, reform. Uh, The disadvantage is perfect. It's going to help the party. Tessa herself, she's going to back up and do what she normally does. In this case, she's not going to use a high spell. She's going to use her blast and shoot off towards the creature. She's going to hit and do some damage. Okay. All right. And back to top of the round. Jackson, you're just in time. It is your turn, sir. Wonderful timing. Right. I'm going to go ahead and charge closer. Okay. Try and get the ready. I'm going to go ahead and as I charge, pull out my shield. And I'm going to stab it with one hand. You have a metal trident, correct? Yep. Okay. That is a one to hit. Oh, <laughs> did you get a one or did you? I rolled a one. Now one. You rolled a natural one, a critical fail. <laughs> yeah. And you were charging towards an acidic creature. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, I should have waited. I should have waited. Somebody's going swimming. <laughs> yeah. As Jackson runs uh, forward, he is in the sand. He has a trident. 
He loses his footing. He begins to stumble. Trident goes down, which hits the sand and pops out of his hand, knocking him forward into the creature. He will go full, bro full blown into the creature, uh, taking some acidic damage for touching it of eight. And if you're wearing metal armor, put a minus one next to it as it begins to dissolve. And you are prone, essentially, uh, kinda not inside the creature, but covered in the creature. Covered in the creature. <laughs> Gans will say, what, what is it? What are you fighting in the darkness? I cannot see. Can I have a torch? Here, here, here's the torch. He grabs, the torch. grabs the torch from you and starts walking forward with the torch lighting it up until he's within 20 feet. And he can see, whoa, and he can see this giant ooze uh, with Jackson in it horrifically all over his face and, and body. Looks like it's swallowing him whole. Back here with me. <laughs> Pulls his rapier out and, and says, how do we fight this? Not with the rapier. <laughs> Maybe with fire, give a torch. Oh, takes the torch. Good idea. The torch. Takes the torch and puts it forward towards the creature. Creature, creature doesn't seem to like it. Kind of gives a little pullback, but he's able to try to attack with the torch. Does, essentially. Puts the torch forward and tries to give the creature a burn with fire. Doesn't do as much as it should do, but he, he seems to have hit it. It's reacted. It's taken damage. Did it cut it out? It, no, he, he's not going to douse it. He's just going to put it like close to burn him, I'm going to say, to save the door. He wants to see. <laughs> and now we're in darkness. <laughs> oh, is he the only one with the torch? He has it. It's, yeah, still, the yeah, torch. it's still lit. Tessa would be in darkness. At the, she could see oh, to see Gans. Uh, Ragnar. Ragnar is close to the creature, and uh, Jackson would be, of course, in front of him in the creature. What's Ragnar going <laughs> to do? Ragnar's going to toss his nice scimitar away and grab Jackson's trident. Oh, yeah. Is um, Jackson, like, completely engulfed in this thing? Uh, not technically. He's not. He's just fallen into the front of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Ragnar, Ragnar grabs the trident. Two-handed attack. Oh, he's so got to let go of the club? Hitting. Yep, no chance right. of hitting him. Just for a minute. Oh, yes. Here's thank you. Thank you. Uh, 50, we do the 50%. Call high or low? We'll go with high for Jackson. All right. High for Jackson. As he rolls a 22 to hit. Oh, all right. He got the creature. So he's going stabbing forward. Uh, both guys are in there, but he does stab the creature. 1d8. Nine damage again. All right, so he does nine damage. The trident is metal, and the trident is non-magical, correct? Yep. All right, so put a minus one as it takes uh, damage and begins to uh, disintegrate. Damage is dealt. Beautiful. Okay. Kylo. You stand at the back. Again, you see Jackson in the creature. You know, if you take a shot, you got a chance to hit him. Um... You can, know, I, can I pull? Can I pull Jackson to safety? You'd have to get up there. You're far away. Remember, you could I'm use your now, you could use your full movement to move up there, but you'd have to offer your hand and pull him out. It's safe to do so. It's not like. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. You do so. You go up there. You grab his hand. You pull him out. Essentially, he's on the ground, prone next to you. You're toe to toe with the creature. Toe to toe. Is there? Yeah. Can I scurry back a little bit or no? A full movement to get up there. Okay. Your interaction, I'll even give you your interaction to pull him out. You still have your so action. I still have my action, mm -hmm. so I could attack. Yep. Um, I'm assuming I still had my, my crossbow in the other hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll shoot, I'll shoot the creature. All right, go for it. Fifteen. All right, take another shot off into the, the liquid-like creature with your uh, projectile weapon. <laughs> give me damage. Nine. Nine. Okay. Okay. All right. Creature's turn. Creature has disadvantage from uh, Clairvel's vicious mockery. Creature cannot do anything directly to Jackson because it's not inside him. But we have Jackson prone, have you there, and Ragnar is there. So it's three targets. So we'll do the one, two, three, four, five, six. Who wants to be what? One and two. One, two? All right. I'm at Kylo three, four. One at B. Jackson, coming for you. 
<laughs> All right, Jackson. It kind of reels back. And oh, then... he's still prone, you said? He is still prone. So that'll cancel out the uh, disadvantage from the... Because I have advantage because he's prone. Okay. All right, so straight up. Then... Oh, I lost it. Uh... Oh, 18. Do... Uh -huh. Oh, wait. You do... do you have your shield, though? Would you technically uh... have your shield? Actually, no. I never went and picked it back up. That's got right. Caught. I got you. <laughs> so 17 hits, yes. All right. Still the silver shield? Or did you get rid of that one, too? I still have that one. Okay, he does. Two points of damage. But the acid comes from his body uh, for nine points of damage. And any non-magical armor you're wearing will have a minus one as it begins to... Another minus one as it begins to disintegrate. If you already had a minus one, you would be at a minus two. That was nine points of damage in total? Uh, yes. All right. Okay, Clairval. I look at this, shake my head in dismay. <laughs> you hideous blob of nothing. Watch what you eat or you're going to feel even more bloated by the end of this. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Five. <laughs> Four points of psychic damage. Disadvantage on your next attack. Beautiful. All right. Tessa, end of the round. She's going to fire off. Oh, magical spell. She only gets a three. Not going to do it. Back to the top of the round. Jackson, you are prone. Half your movement and to stand up. Half his movement to stand up. Yep. Okay. And throw his hands forward real anger like. And firebolt. Yeah. So, 10 to hit. You got him. Firebolt to hit with a 10. That is 9 damage. Hi. Okay. Bonus action. Going to bring my battle axe to my hand. Oh, sweet. Battle axe comes to the hand. Do you want to move? Uh, I will step in front of Kylo so he's got some protection. Nice. All right. Because I know he's a ranged fighter. Gans will say, uh, Gans will hold up the torch and he'll say, ah, do you have any other weapons? I uh, feel this rapier, if it's not any good here, there's not much I can do. Use, use the fire again. Use the fire again. Sure. And he steps up with you guys, four in the row now, four in front of it, and he'll put the fire in. Well, he did hit him last time, you're right. He got a 17, he's gonna do it. Another three, not bad. Okay, never mind. Good call. Alright, Gans burns him with the thing. Ragnar. Ragnar has the, the trident in both hands. Two-handed trident. Yep. He's going to go ahead and use it again. Okay. Sucks for Jackson. <laughs> but that's an 11 to hit. Nice. That does 8 damage. 8? Yep. Okay. All that's right. Two on the trident. Kylo. Kylo, you are face to face with it. Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, uh, I have Jackson right in front of me, and mm -hmm. just to just in front of me as well. So I'm gonna back up. Okay. Um, move my, my movement to back up, and then uh, take another shot at it. Okay. All right. Uh, go for step, it. A, a step out of the line of sight of Jackson. So. Okay. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Don't fire through him. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was good because I only got a ten. <laughs> ten, ten so will I, hit. You're gonna hit him with a ten. ten. Will hit. Oh, yeah, wow. he's he's a big gelatinous creature. It's not like he's hard to hit or has a, a hard surface. All right, hit it for five. Hit for five. Okay. Yep. All right, that was Kylo. Creature's <laughs> turn. So creature has technically uh, three people in front of it. Yeah, it has Gans, Jackson, and <laughs> summon Diet Pepsi. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do the same thing. Jackson, one, two. We'll do Gans, three, four. And we'll do uh, the other guy. Four. He's going to go for Gans. Uh-oh. All right. Oh, Ragnar? Yeah. Bye-bye, NPC. <laughs> He's going to hit Is him with... Is he wearing any armor? Uh, he I'm has essentially years. leather. Essent yeah, essentially leather armor on. Leather armor. Uh, he is going to hit him, however. So he's going to do damage to him. So he's going to do one initial damage. And then he's going to do acid damage. Four. Five points of damage. Yep, six total on him. He does not wear leather armor, so he is not corroded by anything. Doesn't harm leather. 
Oh, nice. Uh, Claire Rell. If you keep going after the individual with the torch, you're going to have painful indigestion. I swear <laughs> to you. Heartburn. Wisdom saving throw? Raw. That's what I was trying to come up with, and I was trying to complete blank. Oh, 11. 11, no. One point of psychic damage. Ooh, okay. Still, that psychic damage does hurt him. But one point one point. Damage. Hey, how do we get these... Get echo. Oh, you're <laughs> echoing. Why are you echoing? Test, test, echo, test. There we go. No, there you're we good go. now. Yeah. All right, Tessa, end of the round. Yourself. Okay. <laughs> Girl. She's going to shoot a spell. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, unfortunately, she got a four. So go back to the top of the round. Jackson. Jackson is going to go ahead and firebolt again. All right. Actually, no. He's going to use the battle axe. Oh. A frustrated two-hand swing. Is it a metal? Is it a magic metal axe? This is the one yeah. you took from. It's the plus one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, one. it is magic. Yeah. So that's eleven. Nice. There you go. Okay. That's. Is that plus one to the damage as well? Yes. Seven plus one, so eight. All right, and Jackson. Bonus action. Second wind. Oh. The heal. What's the. Uh, Seven plus three. Exactly ten health, yes. Perfect. Jackson steps up with the uh, magical battle axe and lays it hard into the ooze. As he hits it, he essentially does cut it in half. You see it kind of crack, dissipate, Oops. and go to the ground in a big puddle of slime. It doesn't seem to be moving. He backs up, heals himself, and essentially the room goes quiet. Sorry, guys. <laughs> what would you do? I, I wanted to see if there was going to be a psychic connection like some of the other obelisks we've touched. touched. I didn't think there was something moving in it. Do any of those psychic it. connections work out well for us? Uh, no, but you <laughs> know, but I don't know what you thought this we, one was going to be the one that well, did it? We've gained information from every single one. Or that. Yeah, Jack's not going to eat this one. <laughs> okay. He is going to relieve himself. <laughs> Gonna pee into the slime? Oh, we're feeding, so he's gonna take a piss on it. <laughs> he's a very everyone move. Everyone move back. <laughs> Establish dominance. <laughs> Establish dominance. It's dead. Okay, so right. we can assume that the uh, that the. Um, <clears throat> ooze is gone, and there's no more ooze. Uh, the ooze is technically. Uh, dead for lack of a better term but it, it is goop it's there on the ground it's acidic goop uh it's not okay. all the way around the obelisk it's only in front of it on the north half of the room <laughs> is there a way to get to so the obelisk so continue to eat it everything uh if anything was put into it it would still probably corrode yeah no but the thing like the individuals with uh that took acid damage to their armor and their weapons is it continuing to eat at it no it or doesn't it damage then Correct. It doesn't do a, an ongoing effect. What damage is done is done. Uh, the weapons have been damaged. The armor has been damaged. They will need repair um, over time. Uh, but right now, we'll keep that cumulative damage. And um, yeah, you can walk around the obelisk to the other sides and access it that way if you wish. But it does not do further acid damage. Okay, so Definitely. just for the for the prediction then, uh, Ragnar is not, he's fully clothed still that way. Yes, he did not burn all the way off. He has some holes, some damage, but uh, right. he's not naked. Yeah, <laughs> the prediction is completed. Uh, <laughs> nah, but nah, but much damage. Oh, sorry, Verlaine. Oh, I didn't see the posture check. Check there. Bye, hi there. Oh, posture check. Yeah, I missed it. Okay, <sighs> so uh, so I can get to the other side of the the obelisk where the uh, where yes. there's no um, um, acid. Acid and pee. And yes. <laughs> I'm gonna touch the obelisk. All right, so you reach out with your hand, you touch the obelisk. As you do so, you notice the um, carving or inscription or whatever it is at the top of the obelisk does light up. It lights up with a red kind of glow. Hold your hand there and the sun begins to uh, illuminate with a red light. Let go. You see it dim, kind of go off. Okay. Any, anybody sense anything happening there? 
everybody kind of looks around nobody's heard anything there was no 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 sound uh accompanied with it nothing no far off sound or anything like that um did you guys see a light i saw a light yeah everybody gans and tesla everybody say saw yeah they saw the light okay. um any markings uh, light up on it at all? no nothing actually everything went really dark and really dim except for the sound of its apex nearly got naked Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I would have changed to that had I known you were going to end up in the goo. <laughs> um, put my hand back on it again. Okay, lights back up again. Same thing. But no, no other ill effects. Nothing. Roll, uh, roll effects. perception in this case. I'm going to give you this if it's high enough. Because of where everybody's positioned and where you are, you'd be on the southern it end is of the nineteen. Ah, I'll give it to you for that. On the southern end of the obelisk, um, as you put your hand on this and let it let it come to light, the red light kind of beacons out of the top of it. Uh, you're looking around, checking other things out, and down the hallway where you came from initially, um, it goes down into the darkness, back to the shore. You can just see the edge of a red glow from that far off room. From that room? Yeah. Okay. Um... Somebody want to check that out? Are you going to? Well, yeah, okay. We're kind of checking in here. We haven't looked behind these vines yet. Someone went and touched something they weren't supposed to. Just I didn't to... want to move on, but they're touching you. Know. <laughs> or Jackson goes to check those. Or Jackson goes to check that again. He's going to pull out that silver shiny shield and see how that feels on his arm. Okay. All right. Take that out. Put it on. Is this the one with the um, the dent in the front? Like yeah okay so you can tell right away that it's not going to give you full armor bonus uh being uh -huh. dented and knocked in but just the re like the reflection part of it or whatever is pretty cool it's <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool Ooh, shiny <laughs> yeah what's everybody else doing trying to check behind the vines all right so clairvell said we should check behind the vi the vines kylo was uh suggesting someone go back to the main room uh which one do we yeah. go with yeah because i'll have to keep my hand on this so that the glow stays you do you can let go anytime or you can continue to do well, that if I let go it'll stop glowing right it will okay so if we're gonna go forward i'll let i'll take my hand off we'll go back and check it later okay or we can split the party up, and I'll meet back here. Split the party. How about we just see what's behind the vines? Because it didn't <laughs> sound like the rock kept going. There's just okay. a little bit in here, I think. <laughs> okay, let's check in your little storage closet. All right, you guys make your way over to the vines. <laughs> Everybody, uh, Gans brings the torch back and hands it back to Claire Bell. Um, does someone want to look in there first, let's say? Jackson just for roll again. All right, Jackson, you go up to the... Let me see here. <clears throat> Surprised he hasn't said the obvious yet that he was going to taste the vines. <laughs> <laughs> or, or make a tea out of them. <laughs> I'm not going to use this play. <laughs> uh, he never split the party yet. Give me one second. Which one did I? Where did I draw the little image? Oh, sorry. This page. Aha! La la la. <coughs> Too many pages. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Jackson, you go to the vines and you peer through. As you look through, you see a narrow crack in the stone uh, going about eight feet up. So the, think of it as the wall uh, ahead of you kind of comes together from each side and there is a space in the middle. Now you can't walk down it. It's not a, uh, like a five foot opening. If anything, it would be, you know, maybe a foot, two feet max at different parts. It looks like it's cracked and broken through. Uh, the ground does continue on, but you would have to squeeze through. It's very, in it. very <laughs> narrow. No, your whole body could fit. Oh, you'd have to body. turn sideways, right? And you'd have to shimmy down down the uh, shaft. Yeah, Jackson thinks they should probably go check out the main room first. <laughs> Jackson comes back. Well, Ragnar, there's no way the dwarf's gonna fit down through that, is there? Doesn't look like it. 
All right. Looks like someone could get in there. You could definitely get in there. <clears throat> but you want me to go check it out? I'm probably the scrawniest one here. No offense, to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alive. Someone, <laughs> someone squeezing through. Jackson will squeeze through with them. Okay. All right. All right. I'm taking off my dragon shirt. I do not want this thing ripped as I go through here. <laughs> Unbutton your very nice dragon shirt. Hand it over. Hold that for me. Hand it over to Kyle. <laughs> Hang on. That's a cramp. Clairval, you're looking a little bit uh, rough now, man. You should maybe rest or something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you looked bad earlier. But <laughs> All right, Jackson. All right. I will squeeze, attempt to squeeze my way through. All right, give me an acrobatics or athletics check, whatever you want to use. Uh, Have a good night. Would... Hi there. Uh, acrobatics would be a 13. Hi there. Hi there. Hi there. Hi there. Uh, Jackson, how do you want to go down? Are you going down in full armor? It's going to be a little tough. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and unclip the little clasp that keeps it all on. Okay. Make your way down. Roll for your squeezing through. Athletics, acrobatics, whatever you want to do. That's a 16. Nice. Okay, both of you guys are going to make your way. You're both uh, good That's enough. That's athletic for Jackson. <laughs> Blind and Jackson slippery. <laughs> you squeeze down a narrow, natural opening in the rock until you come to a tiny circular room, big enough for yourself and possibly one other. Another obelisk stands in the center of this very tiny, cramped room but seems to have begun to sink into the sandy floor. It leans towards one of the walls. What do you guys see? There's <laughs> another obelisk in here. Touch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you said it's it started to sink into the ground? Correct, and uh, like a Did leaning tower of... Leaning Tower of Pisa style. Yeah, can we correct the angle on it? Uh, give me a strength check. Only no. if you touch it. <laughs> Only if you touch it. Yeah, I have to touch it to correct it. Uh, that would be a 14 All with right. my uh, negative 1 to strength. Yeah, you go over to touch this. It is heavy. It is heavy, solid rock. Uh, yep. Way heavier than it even looks. As you touch it, there is no give. It's, it's not going to move. But when you touch it, again... The top lights up. The top okay. lights up a nice pale blue color. Oh, this sure. one lights this up doesn't... blue when we touch it. Oh, sure. Yours doesn't come with a news. <laughs> now, as you are right there, Clairval, because you're, you're right on top of it and you're touching it, the apex lights up blue and you see uh, three carvings in it that depict wind. Okay. So I'll reiterate that to the rest of the party. Okay. I try blowing on the obelisk as I'm touching it. Good. <laughs> uh, if only we had cameras. <laughs> right across the tip. It's a good idea because of wind and whatnot, but nothing, nothing does react. It just, as long as you have your hand on it, it is lit up blue. It has a, yep. uh, a blue glow to it. Jackson, okay, what uh, still, what are you doing in there? He's still holding on to it, right? Yeah. Jackson's just there for protection at this moment. All right, Jackson, uh, roll. Uh, you're doing protection. Roll a um, perception. Make sure nothing's creeping up on him. <laughs> While they're doing that, right, can, can I just look back the red down light the aisle? That you saw. The, uh, hallway? That's 14. 14? Uh, go, ahead there. go ahead there, Clairwell. Okay, look, that red light you saw, when I'm touching this obelisk and getting a blue light on it, are you seeing a blue light as well? Yeah, that's what I want to do, is look back down the hallway and see if I see anything happening this way. Okay, so as you move into the, the center, or the bottom, sorry, the bottom of the room you're, you're in with the ooze, uh, looking down the hallway, you can see the edge of a, a slight blue glow in the further okay, room. Yeah, here. Yeah, it's shining blue now. What happens when I take my hand off? Uh, again, it will uh, lose light. It'll stop glowing. Yep, darkness. As you okay. do that, Jackson's going to say, oh yeah, and summon his trident back to his hand. 
Does it physically ripping. clank down the, the stone of the no, narrow no, no, passage? It, it materializes in his hand. Oh, okay. I thought it physically <laughs> flew at you. And Ragnar goes, what the hell? Jackson, <laughs> as you were you were uh, passively perceiving, um, you're looking to make sure nothing is in the room with you and Clairval. Behind the obelisk, uh, it's very very small, very cramped room. He's touching it like this at the front. Behind it, you can see the edge of something on the ground. Looks like a box. Okay, before you touch anything else, what in-game action are we uh, uh, banning? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you Go ahead and look at what I did. Rolling dice. All right, five, five, min <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> five minutes, you can't no roll dice. dice. <laughs> five minute timer, you can't roll dice. 11.57. <laughs> just thought funny. It is funny. <laughs> I like it. Well, that's the band action for D&D. &D. Dice rolling. <laughs> Dice rolling. Damn it. Should have done no perception checks. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, too. Hey, don't give yes, people ideas. See that box. You see that box? Yes. Okay, so you see you see a box. So ahead of you is Clairvel and the obelisk, and on the other side at the base is a box. Has that room collapsed? Is that why it's leaning and there's very little room for more than two people in there? Hard to tell you're not there. No, I know. <laughs> you're a monster. <laughs> Let's here we can allow that. <laughs> I'll allow that, yeah. Yeah, I'll go ahead and point out that box to him. Okay. Alright, you pointed out to Clairvel. Clairvel looking down, you see a wooden box about twelve inches long, six inches wide, six inches deep. Is there anything in it? Uh, I, he just sees it at this point. You'd have to go and fish it out of there. I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, make your way over there, kind of squeeze around, uh, fish out this box. Pardon me. Uh, it doesn't open. It's just four-sided box. Hmm. Does not open. Using your perception, we're going to keep your 14 and looking at the box in your hand. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're looking at the box and there are, there are some markings on it um, on one side of it it shows a boat carving of a boat is there anything on any of the other sides on the other side, it is a carving of a larger ship with oars. Okay. I'll go ahead and cast... Which of my cantrips seems like it could solve this for us? <laughs> I tried. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. See what it starts with. Yeah. I don't got nothing useful for right now. Okay. What happens if I let go of the obelisk? Does it then open? Uh, if you let go of the obelisk, it just is as it is. It just doesn't glow anymore. No, no, no. no. The box behind me that Jackson's trying to get at. Mm -hmm. No, no, no reaction between the box and the obelisk. Yeah. Okay. Are they relaying this stuff to us that they found the box in that? I don't know. You gotta ask them. Yep. <laughs> I was explaining to you what was happening as it was happening as we were touching the obelisk and that. And okay. Uh, Jackson, can you, can you lift the box? I'll go ahead and try. Yeah. Lifts up. Uh, is it small enough for him to bring it back through the crevice? Weighs about four pounds. No, but is it the size of it? Can you get it through the crevice? Yeah, what do we say? Six inches, uh, or sorry, 12 by six by six. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why don't you bring that back with us and we'll examine it. Maybe First, we I'm can go ahead and try to touch one of the sides with the boat to it, to the obelisk itself. Uh, okay. That doesn't... Fair enough, fair enough. No reaction. Okay. Good try, though. Not, not bad. And Maybe, one more uh... thing before I go. I'll use precedent for 
a puff of wind on those wind symbols that he found. Uh, again, good idea. Uh, Claire Val blew on it earlier. You use the spell to, to do it. it. Doesn't doesn't react. It's a little more wind. <laughs> a good, it's a good wind. No, just no reaction, no reaction. All right, yeah, Jackson will bring the box back to you and use his prestidigitation one more time as he leaves the room. Okay. To leave a really sulfury smell as he leaves the room. <laughs> sulfury smell? <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> room. You've just killed Clairvale. <laughs> <laughs> Antagonizing the bard, that's always good. <laughs> that yeah, I was, I was thinking maybe Tess could take a look at it when you bring it back through. All right, Jackson. Have you seen Jackson's self preservation skills? Touche. <laughs> Jackson comes through when he has the box with him as he comes through. Uh, Claire Val, you're coming through or staying? I'll go through as well. All right, you guys gather back up in the main room and you have this. Trying to come up with a plan, but at yeah. this point. So, you said you saw some lights down the other tunnel when we were touching the obelisk? Yeah, the blue light went off when you touched it. The red light was there when I touched it. Um, I can stay here and hold well, the obelisk. Well, let's go take a look at that other area. Uh, I'm hesitant to split us up with that mind flare still kicking about. Tessa does remind you that he did plane shift, but... Um, he could do it once a day. I don't remember where we long rested. Was it before? Yeah, it was before. It was before he's able to do it again okay. today. Yeah. Oh yeah, is that a new day? Does that mean I have my spells? Mm -hmm. No, you need them all today. Yeah, you've used them. Yeah, yeah, yeah I figured. Yeah. Well, let's go check out that other area where they were lighting up. Yeah, we rested perfect. before we went down the elevator, right? Mm -hmm. That was that was when we rested. Yeah. 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 Okay. And we're in that main room, real quick. That is. Is that where the big monster was? Uh, correct, yes. So you make your way all the way back to the main room where you first came in, and that's where the big monster was, yes. And go get oh, my going. Nice shield. Is that where you wish to go? You're in the we're obelisk room. Right? back there. Well, you, that's the next room Life over. Water? No, we're, we got the beach with the lake. Oh, that's, yeah, that's what I mean. The beach with the lake. That's where the water was. Okay. The big monster. Yeah. Oh, you mean the bladed monster. I see. You got confused. Okay. Yeah, that's what yeah, I meant. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. He meant How the big, the big monster that? in the water. It's just the next room back. No, no, I meant the one with the bladed monster. Oh, that's a while back. Yeah, you gotta go all the way down a hallway and then back into the the main room. Yeah, Jackson is gonna go and do that alone. Yeah, sure. He'll use his dash action as much as he can. All right, Jackson. Back, where are you going? Shield. I need my good shield. <laughs> what well, will come with you? It's a family heirloom. It's a family heirloom. There's a mind flare in the loose. Die the hell with it. I need that shield. Well, are we all going to go back, or should some of us check out what this red light does? No, let's all stick together because I don't want to deal with that freaking mind flare. He did yet. kill a guy in a round. Yeah. So, based on Jack, he might go hungry on that one. <laughs> mind flare will show up. I'm here to eat your mind. No, you. <laughs> no, you. <won't. laughs> All right, you're going to move as a group so you can get his shield. Yep. Okay, make yes. your way back to the beach, down the hallway, the into the main room. The crowd is going Until he can get his shield. He picks, a, he retrieves his shield from where he has dropped it. Everybody's kind of satisfied. You may slowly make your way back to your standing. I would beach. not go that we are all satisfied. <laughs> satisfied. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, that's okay. This at this point. We all have grumpy looks on our face because we've walked to the. 10,000 steps. More He's like, oh, yeah, he thank you. Too. Thank you. I got my shield. <laughs> no, but he actually didn't say thank you, thank you. <laughs> Don't put words in his mouth. I'm, pretty sure he picked, I'm sure he picked it up, licked any of the blood from that creature off of it, and carried on his there way. There you go. All right. You're back in the main room, whatever way. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back at the beach. Back at the beach. Six hours later. <laughs> we got to go down that other tunnel is where you saw the uh, We don't lights. have to go down that tunnel, but we can. To see I'd where rate. the other lights were is what the plan was, wasn't it? Oh, Frosty's here. Oh. Hey, Frosty. Welcome. He wants you to hydrate. He's working on it. Ooh. Oh, man, I got to get more water. I got the end of it. Oh, well, whatever. We will hydrate on your behalf, TM. There we go. I'd see the end of it. <sighs> Oh, who's playing what class real quick there? Here, give yourselves a rundown of your classes. I'm going to go grab more water. I'll be right back. Small break, real fast. 
Go this from Kylo down. I'm Clairval. I am a half elf bard of the College of Eloquence. What's Ragnar again? Ragnar's a fighter, right? Ragnar's Fight a fighter. Fighter soldier. Soldier background, yep. Yeah. Build dwarf fighter, yeah. No, oh, he's he dwarf, an, yeah. He's a champion fighter. That's his subclass as well. Oh, Hi, Loke, you are? Half elf ranger. Uh, I forget what my subclass was. It was uh, Beastmaster, I think. Is that okay. how that goes? And Jackson is a Triton Eldritch Knight fighter. With a penchant for eating things that he shouldn't. <laughs> eating everything. And irritating isn't. people he shouldn't. Yeah. And, and obsessing over his um, items. Yeah. He will quite often uh, cast what is it, Eldritch? Uh, what's the thing you cast? Press stuff, like, oh, no, for for it to come oh, back. Oh, my Eldritch bond. Eldritch bond, so you can resummon. That's what you should put on that shield. <laughs> I am not allowed, actually. You're not allowed to put it on your shield. I cannot put it on shields. I cannot put it on ammunition. Is that like a religious thing? No, it's like it, literally it in the game rules. Oh. Otherwise, I would have one arrow all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're on the beach, I believe. <clears throat> yep. All right, got your shield back. We got the box. Uh, we're in the main. Staying the hell away from the water. This is the room that uh, Kylo could see the glow in. So when he was in the other room and the glows were going off, he knew it was coming from this room. The way he's rubbing his hands, he says that. He knows we have a split the party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the globe was coming from somewhere in this room? <coughs> yeah, so when... Uh, Not you... down the other tunnel. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's coming from the main room, the, yeah. where the lake is. You're in the main room, there's a passage to the to the right, there's a passage to the left. You went to the left, the left. right, there was an obelisk. He touched yeah. it, and when he looked back through the hallway, he could see a glow coming from the main room. All right, let's do this then. Uh, Jackson... Myself and Ragnar will go back to the obelisk we were just at with the oozes. Okay. I'll touch it. Kylo, Tess, and Gans. Gans. Uh, tell us what you see in here, and maybe we can make a determination if we need to be touching this one, the one through the crack, and maybe one on the other side, or what. Okay. All well, right. Let's try and keep at least somewhat together for the time being. All right. So. Fucking mind flare. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. All right, you make your you split the party, which is beautiful, uh, and you guys are, are half and half. Uh, you go over and touch the obelisk. As you touch the obelisk in that room, the people in the main room, Kylo, uh, Gans, and Tessa, can see a glow coming from across the water on the door itself, right at the top of the door, almost etched into it above. Uh, Tessa will go. The sun's lit up. As the red glow lights up, reflecting off the water, giving an ominous look to the room. Oh, there's a there's a sun symbol above the door. There's a sun si sun symbol sun symbol carved above the door, but it's so far away from you, you can't completely see it when it's not lit up. But being lit up, right. you can see the red glow emulating from there. Yes. Okay, <clears throat> so um, I'm gonna have Gans go deliver a message to them to. Sent to go into the other obelisk by himself. Two of them should. Two of them should go into the other obelisk. Well, it's not that far down the hall. Right? <laughs> That's fine. All right, he goes down the other hallway and lets them know that uh, he'll say, "Gentlemen, uh, the symbol has lit up above the door across the water. I don't know what that means, but it lit up." Well, let's see what happens. Let's see if the uh, wind so, symbol that we saw on the top of this is what we see on the other door there. Who's yeah, gonna... so essentially I told him to go tell you to send two guys through to that yeah. other obelisk and somebody keep touching the same obelisk. So don't yeah. like so we don't split up to single yeah. guys. Okay, so you have yeah. so and you go with Jackson through the crack there, and uh Ragnar will stay here with me. Okay. All All right. Right. Ragnar will pick up his weapons that he dropped earlier. Yes, Ragnar will retrieve his two weapons uh from near the ooze, and uh Gans and Jackson will make their way into the uh, very thin area. Gans is it's very small. He can get through as well. I'll roll just for fun. And you two both Since make your way. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been five minutes. You guys can make your way. You shimmy down the, the little area 
into where the obelisk is. One of the two of you touches it. And um, how are we going to do this? Okay, so somebody touches it. And I guess... Kyla and Tess are still in the main room. They'll yell down the little hallway to Clairvel. Uh, Gans will say, we, we've touched it. I, it's lit up now. So he'll he'll yell out. They're touching it. Okay, you yell kind of down to the guys on the beach. And on the beach, Tess will go, oh, the other symbol's lit up blue now. And you get the red and the blue kind of, what, does it make purple? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> you got kind of a mixed color shimmering off the water. But you notice the blue is on the left, followed yeah. uh, by the red sun symbol. So you can almost see it. Left side of the door. Almost see it like a triangle above the door, and that the left, the left hand side has the wind symbol in blue. The center, up above, has the um, red sun, and that's all. Nothing else reacts. Okay. Does it look like below the sun there would be another symbol? Give me a perception. Very high. What do your elf eyes see? (laughs) Not enough, because it's only an eight. He's only half elf. You're like, eh, you're trying to squint. It's just so far, and it's, you know. Well, I'm just trying to guess from where the positioning is. If there's two symbols or one, I don't need to see the symbol. I can't give you anything with that roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm blinded by those lights. <laughs> Too bright. <laughs> All right, so we relay that the, they're in a triangular shape. There's mm-hmm. two symbols. Can't tell if there's any more than right, but not more. We all go together down the other hallway. See if there's another mm-hmm. one more obelisk down that other hallway. All so right. with those two touch, <clears throat> nothing happens across the water. Uh, right? Well, they light up, but nothing. There's no sound. Nothing else uh, reacts. Oh, this sucks. We're gonna split into four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's only three. No, I think there's gonna be four. <laughs> I think there's one top, bottom, left, and right. To make a triangle. There you go. What are Ga- oh Gans is a fighter, right? <laughs> Gans is a uh, rogue. Fodder. This is a rogue, okay. And, uh, no fodder. fodder. Yeah, and Tessa is a witch. Uh yes she is. Not a warlock, a witch. Well, feminine warlock, whatever you want yeah. to call her. And she's been collecting souls. Has and like has one of your Ragnar. ally, yeah, has your yeah, ally. She has, uh, yeah, she has Ragnar's soul kind mm-hmm. of bound to her at the moment. Yeah. You're in before today. Because <laughs> uh, Ragnar died to the Mind Flare the last time we, a couple couple sessions ago now. Yep. All right, so you guys have with us. You guys, you guys want to regroup. So everybody's going to regroup on the beach. You're all together on the beach. And uh, Claire Vell suggests let's go down the right-hand path. It's up to you, but that's what he suggested. Might as well. Oh, wait. Before we go, I want uh, uh, just a theory, Jackson. Um, place the box near the water. Jackson will walk the shore and place it softly in the water. Okay. Yeah, place it in the water. All right, does placing the box do? in the water, it does float. Uh, it floats perfectly on top of the water. Uh, okay, how do we trigger this thing? Uh, Tessa will and, say... Uh, we've got cat aerobics going on behind you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Tessa will say, um, uh, well, where did you find that? It was with the obelisk. She'll go, do you think it's magical? Yeah. I can, inv- votes on it. I can investigate if you wish. Jack's going to pause and give her a look. You do the same thing yesterday. <laughs> same thing. She will kneel down on the shore, retrieve the eye from the golem that she had. Uh, right, have those eyes. Yeah. She will open the eye of the golem and you know close her eyes and meditate for a second, concentrating on the box. Reach out with her other hand, touching the box. Uh, and she will, you know, shut the eye, put it away stand back up kind of dusting her knees off and she will say um, a command word in this one we're going to just use basic things uh, she'll say yeah we'll, we'll say boat we'll say boat well it'll be in a different language or magical but it's the equivalent of boat she will say 
uh, before you, the box unfolds into a 10 foot long, 4 foot wide, 2 foot deep boat with a pair of oars, an anchor, a mast, a lantern, uh, or oh, sorry, a lateen sail, and sits on the water. I figured it might do something like that. Are you able to undo that now? She <laughs> does. Put it back in the box. Uh, she will say uh, box, uh, causing it to fold back into a box. Okay, yeah, Jack, will scoop it back up. And say we're not doing that again so we can deal with that that thing in there. Free boat, yeah. <laughs> she also tells you that it has a third command word, which we'll use as ship. She'll say that okay. concentrating on it, she was able to uh, uh, telepathically get the secrets of the magical item, and that the third word will unfold it into a twenty-four foot long, eight foot wide, six foot deep ship with five nice. sets of oars, um, a cabin, a mast, and can hold up to fifteen creatures. The first one holds up to uh, four people comfortably. That's more. Dedicate that to memory. Okay, you, yes, you could. It'd just be uncomfortable. It doesn't matter. You're not going on a long voyage, I don't think. <laughs> not today. <laughs> All right, Jackson, you pick up the box. You're holding the box. It's You're in charge of the box. Yep. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. Okay, so let's go check that other room. All right, you going yes, the other yes, way? Yes. Okay. Clairval starting to look impatient for us to go down that other hallway. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys head off all together. Walking I'm, down. I'm not rowing. <laughs> I've got a strength of nine. I ain't rowing shit. <laughs> the bard doesn't row. Yeah, we got sails and we got a guy that can. I'll sing you. Uh, <laughs> I'll sing you. Uh, Shanty. A nice tune to give, <laughs> help you keep rhythm for the row. But... We, we've got. There's sails on it and we got two guys that like to blow stuff, so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, you make your way to the right room. Walking down the natural cave hallway, you come to another large circular cavernous room with a 10-foot-tall obelisk at the center. A large semi-transparent orb of green swirling mist seems to circle around the obelisk, obscuring it slightly. Along the far wall, you can see chains lying on the ground that are attached to the walls and small sets of spikes behind them. Ooh, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds friendly? What do you mean? Yeah, doesn't it? It's really inviting. Grab a rock, throw okay. it into the mist, see what happens. All right, throw a rock essentially you into the mist. <laughs> uh, for, for game terms, we're going to say you hear a hissing sound, as if um, when the rock goes through this cloud, it is acidic and begins to... I don't know if I can really burn rock, but... Uh, We'll burn anything away from the rock. A little trail, little trail of smoke, and we'll burn as much as it can on the rock. I'm having my guts. Well, uh, Claire Val, mm -hmm. Tessa, and who else has? Mm, maybe that's it. Uh, you could do our Arkenya checks. Fifteen. I got a fifteen too. It's a, essentially a cloud kill spell. Which is a oh, swirling mist of acid. I'll relay that to the rest of the party. Okay. So it's a spell. So who casts the spell? Well, it's it's permanently cast. So someone high level casts this, and now it's in place. Okay. Um, you got to do that for like a year for a spell to stay like that. <laughs> yeah, so you it's do. Probably, <laughs> it's probably a glyph somewhere or something. Oh no! It's it's no. it's been cast. It's just cast on the room. On the obelisk area. On the there. Obelisk. Yep. Okay. Um, so, Arcana people, how do we deal with a cloud kill spell that's hanging around forever? Spell, which I can't do. Dispel magic? Oh, yeah. I could do a gust of wind if, we, if I had that spell right now, but I don't. Not until we rest. Tessa says, um, I definitely don't have it. So. <laughs> you can make wind with your other one. <coughs> yes, that's what I was speaking about. But present situation, Jackson will do it. And it's just a light, like, blowing, like, fan on a person's face. Oh, it's that light? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. 
Um, Gust does, Wind is the one where I could just be like, yeah, screw it. Get out of my way. Does uh -huh. Tess have any kind of dispel magic? Uh, she does not. Okay. Um, what would fire do to it? Could we burn burn it off? Uh, give me... Do you have Arcania? Do you have any spells? I do have spells, yeah. My Arcania okay. is not very... I only have a plus one dart to Arcania. I'll roll it anyway, just for fun. Just for fun. <laughs> Six. All right, never mind. You're like, does fire burn it off? <laughs> you have no <laughs> clue. <coughs> Anyone? <laughs> Gens will say, well, this is not my arena. I have, I have no idea when it comes to magic. Tessa well, says... Uh, Tessa, quiet while yeah. the grown-ups think about <laughs> Tessa will say, yeah, uh, we'll agree with Jackson. Um, that would most likely work if you had access to that. Use Ember. <laughs> Use Ember. <laughs> He's got an extra one for me. Thanks. <laughs> Always got my back, Frosty. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We could try fire if you really want. So is, is is cloud kill a poison or is it a uh, acid? Oh, sorry, it's an acid. This is it, in the acid. in the game. It may be a point. I'm using it as an acid cloud. Okay. I'm just it's the same effect as cloud kill. Okay, and mm. what's the saving throw against acid? Uh, like are you saying in game, a game mechanics or. Yeah, would it just I, be a spell? I, I can't uh, really think you can get through that spell. Well, I can't give you that much technical information because this is the point. You don't know. This is why you're you're in a dungeon underground. You have no idea. You've encountered it for the first time. You're not familiar, so you wouldn't have access to that kind of information. you got to kind of go off your what you do know here at this point. Yeah, no, unfortunately, start. when you touch the uh, when you touch the obelisks, they don't stay active unless somebody's touching it. Which means somebody in this case, you'd have to have somebody stand there in the acid. Well, hold on, for a while. You able to active, did you activate the obelisk when you touched it with the uh, club? No. no the did club you just activate. summon the ooze? It just summoned the ooze. The ooze came down from probably from the vibration of me touching it. All right. Um, yeah, we got to clear this room somehow. Anyone has a bucket or anything? I can stick my head in a bucket of water and hold it. <laughs> what? What's that gonna do to you? It's well, acid. I can breathe in the water, but it's not that. Yeah, you, you wouldn't breathe in the acid, but the acid would be on you on your outer outer you skin. Eat the bucket and then. Hmm? See what other shit these Jackson have in his inventory. <laughs> Fish heads, <laughs> dead bugs, a <laughs> couple pieces of wood. <laughs> anybody, anybody have a large bag of holding they can put around the spell? <laughs> oh, I got you. I got you. Hmm. Does, Cass, or does Tess have any kind of uh, spell that would put it in a pocket dimension or anything? <laughs> Unfortunately, she has uh, a lot of attack spells, uh, control spells. Um, Things like that. She doesn't have anything that. Hmm, no. <clears throat> do we have any? Nothing that we have can neutralize acid, right? So no, no science. Hmm. No. Anybody have a bucket? We could throw water at it. We've all got water skins, but I don't know is the uh, lake water that the Kraken is <laughs> floating around in is exactly potable. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. We seem to be at an impasse. Now, uh, Jackson, were you, hmm, let's see. You said you had access to that spell. You just don't, you don't have it right now because you used your spells for the day? Yeah. Ah, okay. All right. Just want to make sure. Because it's high racial spell. Ah, uh, I see. <clears throat> One of. Okay. Actually, you know what? Jackson's going to go ahead and try something. Okay. He's going to target the area where the cloud of cloud kill is, and he's going to cast his own spell of fog cloud. Ooh. See if he can dissipate it with his own spell. 
Is it, it's an orb, right? Orb it's of, an orb. It's an orb. Uh, yeah. So it's yeah. not in the whole room, but it's moving around the room. Mm -hmm. That will be a 20-foot sphere of fog appears within range. That's interesting. <clears throat> okay. Let's play around and for a there. bit. It can't be moved away unless a 10-mile-an-hour wind or stronger blows it away, okay. or until the spell ends. Lasts for an hour. Okay. So he has essentially fog, uh, which water vapor inside of acid in the same 20 foot spear all the way around. So at least it would be diluted, let's say. Now, is it moving? It's just moving around the upper part of the obelisk? Uh, well, it's a, it's a 20 foot um, sphere, so it can, uh, it can encase it, right? So it's like kind it's of right. It's encasing the sphere. Or the, uh, the obelisk. obelisk, yeah, correct, right. Okay. So it's not like we can crawl <laughs> under it. Now, it would be... Fog cloud, that's a 20-foot radius sphere, yeah, so it's... Yeah, they're the same. Yeah. So you have a nice cloud inside. Now we're going to give it to you, it's water vapor, so I'll say it's diluted. Diluted, uh, it won't do as much acid damage, but it is foggy, which you can see, what is it, five feet in front of you at all times? Yep. Okay. Which means if that bugger appears on whoever's in this room, we'll not be able to see into there. Oh... That's interesting. Thank too. you for telling him that. <laughs> Give me ideas. <laughs> Give it to me. But also, the mind flare wouldn't be able to see. Yeah, that's fog, what I'm right? saying. Yeah. He probably wouldn't appear in acid either, but just. <laughs> no, this is acid. Is this acid like the. No, it's not going to be the same as the ooze, right? The ooze was dissolving or dissolving acid for metal. Correct. This acid, correct. This acid, acid is acid, acid, right? Right, yes, It'll correct. Dissolve leather, flesh, whatever. Maybe. So yeah, Jack Maybe. will be one of the ones to stay in this room. Okay. He's concentrating on his fog spell. Yep. Okay. So now, um, before the, the he cast that, could we see the other side of the uh, the room? You can see the room at all times. The room Chains is. Spikes. Yeah, there was so. Remember, big round room. The room is yep. bigger than twenty feet, so it's a bigger room, uh, and that there was chains. Um, on the far end of the room, on the wall, and some spikes on the wall. Um, I'm going to do a quick investigation. I don't know if I'm going to make this or not. Okay. Uh, 17 on investigation uh, as to what the purpose of the spikes, or not the spikes, the chains are for. How do you want to investigate? Give me an idea. Uh, well, you said the room's bigger than 20 feet. So you guys essentially to... are standing at the entranceway in the hallway, looking at this obelisk. So as long as I don't go near the obelisk, I can go around the outside, right? Correct. So you go by yourself around the outside of the, the sphere uh, towards the chains, correct? Towards the chains to investigate um, what the purpose of them would be. I'm not going to pull on them or anything. Because no, that's fine. Yeah. Does a 20 hit? Sorry, what? What's your AC? Does a 20 hit you? Uh, 15 is my armor class. 15 is your armor class? And what did I get? Yeah. What did I just say? 20. 20. 20, sorry. So I hit you with the 20? Yep. As you investigate and you get closer, you see the chain strike out at you, and the manacled end clasps on your wrist. You feel it begin okay, to pull you back towards the wall where the spikes are. Everybody roll initiative. <laughs> Damn I love it. Uh, you're so gullible. <laughs> it's pretty gullible. Oh, no. I got, uh, I got a six. <laughs> uh, that's uh, roll the 12 and if you want me to roll for Ragnar yeah please that's a 17 uh, what did, sorry what did uh, Claire Val get 7 7 okay and then we had Gans uh, and I'm missing somebody aren't I 3 I got 6 Two, four, no that's it Okay. you got Tess oh creature sorry chains uh, chains. Uh, Take three. Yes. So we have chains with a sixteen. Uh, we have Tessa with a fifteen. Oops, I already screwed up. Uh, Ragnar had the seventeen. He's at the top. Sorry. Uh, then we have uh, Gans with the thirteen. Uh, Jackson with the twelve. Uh, Cleverall with a 7 and Kylik with a 6 Alright 
Uh, pardon me, Gans had the 13. 13. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kylo disappears behind the sphere of acid, and you hear him shout, it, shout out, Ah, <laughs> help me! And you're like, Ah, Claire. The chains grabbed me. Ragnar, for lack of a better term, Ragnar's uh, go, I guess. He's going to move to a position to see what's going on. Uh, he sees chains come out of the wall, uh, lash around uh, Kylo's wrist, and begin pulling him back towards the spikes. He can also see the other chains on the wall have lifted up and look like they're going to get him as well, maybe around his arm, other arm and legs. I'm just going to do that for that. Um... Who does I have as number two? Chains. Chains were number two. I'm sorry. Yes. The chains themselves, it's their turn. Uh, so they are going to pull you, Kylo. Strength versus strength. Let's roll. Yeah, go for it. 13. 20. Oh, you got 20? Yeah, 16. All right, plus. you resist. Oh, they try actually, to... Is it, is it more than that? It might be more than that. Oh, it's okay. If it's higher, you beat them. You already beat him. Actually, it's 22. All right, fair enough. Chains go to pull you back towards the spikes. You're able to put your feet in and and hold your ground. They can't move you at this time. No uh, chance to pull free, right? Uh, well, on your turn. Oh. Tessa um, will just say, oh, what has he gotten himself into now? <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> Gans will uh, ask if he can have the torch. Out of the dark. All right, and he'll start making his way over there to see what's going on. He's got to move in over next to Ragnar. Uh, Jay was. Watch out for the chains. Jackson. All right, Jackson, your turn. Jackson will circle around to see what Kylo is shouting about. Okay. Just a, a quick question from the, the whole perspective here for the game. Um, is Jackson supposed to be concentrating on that fog wall? He can. He can no? keep his concentration. The only way he can break it is if he casts another spell with concentration, technically. Okay. Okay. Or we or really rattle him. Yeah. A point. yeah. Just to be clear. Okay. okay, so that's a big wall of chains and everything. Mm -hmm. How far away? Oh, uh, I would say you guys are... I'll give you it's uh, 60 feet from Kylo. Okay, for flavor, Jackson's going to be keeping one hand up, focusing on the spell. But he's going to go ahead and point his other hand and fire bolt. Towards the chains? Okay. Go yep. for it. Yep. That's an 11. 11 to hit. Actually, it, yep. it doesn't hit. Well, it hits, but it doesn't do damage to it. It doesn't beat the AC of it. This this animated object has a higher AC, being chain. Okay. Fire hits it, but does not work in this thing. Clairval, your goal. So it's an animated object, yeah. or it's a creature? Animated object. Does an animated object qualify as a creature? Good technical question. Yes, Would, because your psychic damage won't do anything to it. Like, uh... I'll actually have to do something else. Yeah. Medium construct. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. That was animated armor, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that counts. Yep, animated objects. Count? Okay. Uh... Okay. Yep, they're constructs, and they have okay. a intelligence and wisdom. Yep. All right. You lousy pile of rust. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Five. Nope. <laughs> Two points of psychic damage to the rusting chain. Nice, man. Nice, nice. Okay. And they have disadvantage on their next attack roll. Beautiful. Or save or whatever <laughs> all right end of the round poor kylo <laughs> end of the round yo you're the bottom guy you're it's you right. you before your turn okay um are the, ch are the chains very strong oh hell yeah um all right so i'm gonna hit it with the the plus one uh short sword all right so you got your one your one arm is uh it kind of yeah got the chains, you got to try to attack it with a short sword. Okay, go for it. Oh, 20. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Bam. Hit it with the sword as hard as can. Eight points of damage. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. You said significant damage to the one chain that's got you uh, grappled around the wrist. I'll go back to the top of the round for Ragnar. Ragnar. 
What does Ragnar wish to do, Jackson? He's going to go ahead and pull out. Actually, how much distance does he have? Uh, again, we'll say 60 feet. Yeah, he'll pull out his longbow and make a shot. Oh, wait a minute. Ragnar? Ragnar doesn't have longbow. It's in his hair sheet. Oh, okay. He's never used it. This will be his first shot. <laughs> <laughs> go for he it. He has a longbow. He's got leather armor. He's got a shield. Oh, my God. All right. Go for it. That's a 12. Nope. Won't hit. You shoot with a 12. It deflects off the chain. He's going to approach as he does so. Oh, nice. Okay. He gets up close. Perfect. All right. Chains. Chains have you. Um, and they're going to... Let's see. I'm going to have one of the other chains go out and try to grab your leg. Attempt to. Whose leg? Yours. Because you're within... My leg. Yep. Does a 12 hit? No. Okay. 15 armor. So the other chain is out near you, but has not grabbed your leg. The one that's got your arm uh, was trying to pull you towards the spikes last time, but you resisted. So it kind of deflects up, shoots for your neck to try to wrap itself around your neck. Ooh, with a 17. And we'll begin to strangle you. <laughs> get a dodge? I had to roll to hit in this case. Uh, and okay. I did. So this did it come off my so did it come off my arm to go for my neck? Uh yeah, let's say that. That's fair. It'll let go of your arm and then just re roll around your neck to give you a strangle. It'll start choking you out. Uh, you're only gonna take three points of damage as it's got you around the neck. Okay. Like that muscular neck. Yeah. <laughs> Tessa. Tessa will make her way over to where you guys are. She was standing back and she'll kinda look at the situation. She goes, Hmm. Should I fire upon it? <laughs> Get it off me! I could hit him. Shoot at the shoot at the base of it. All right, it's still a fifty fifty because you're in it now. It's it's got you strangled. So okay, we're gonna say, what do you want to be, Cal? High or low? Uh, high. High hits you. What? High hits you. Yes. High okay. Hits me. All right. Oh, 44 doesn't hit you. Hits the chains. All right. <laughs> I love it. 18. All right. She fires off, uh, again, another spell of black and blue magic towards the chain. She does hit, and she does some, oh, some nice damage, man. Okay. Nice. All right. She does damage there. Gans. Uh, Gans is, there is over there. Is to stun the, the construct? Uh, we don't know. We don't know anything about him, unless you have a... A way to know. <laughs> Gans himself <laughs> will make his way over. Slack. Uh, he's got his rapier, and he's got the torch. He's going to come over into a position right next to you, uh, where he clearly will not miss the chain. So I'm not going to give him the 50-50, and he's just going to roll the hit. He is going to hit. Takes his rapier and slashes at the chain, effectively severing it. He's going to break the first oh, nice. chain. So no longer strangling you, it's off you at that point. As I'm pulling it off, I said, Gans, watch out for that other chain. Huh? <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, your go. Firebolt at all the massive chains. All right, you take a firebolt and you shoot at the next one you can see. It's going to be 20 to hit. 20, you got him. All right. This is not a natural 20. That's okay. That's nine damage. I don't know if you can critical chain, but... <laughs> <laughs> all right nice damage beautiful you hit it with the uh the fire bolt it kind of reflects back a little bit um clairval link by link you'll be torn apart and made into something useful <laughs> wisdom saving throw six three points of psychic damage disadvantage on your next attack roll beautiful Kylo, okay, Kylo, you are next to uh, Gans. The chain is broken, but there was that other one that was coming for you and missed. So you're still within okay. range. Both of you guys are within range. Um, how many chains are left? Uh, three. There's three chains. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to... I can... Can I grab Gans and move? Mm-hmm. And that would be the whole turn, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm gonna grab Gans and move back okay. toward with the team. All right, as you move, chains. as you move back, you guys are you're the last of the round. You move back to a safe position. The chains kind of strangle out towards you guys as far as they can. They can only reach where you were. They can't go farther. They're attached to the wall. Then they just kind of go limp, and sit there quietly unmoving, because there's no one to grab. And that's the end of the round, right? That's it. Well, end of... Okay. Unless you want to continue to fight chains, they're un uneffective <laughs> I'm, I'm at this. Them. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm just telling everybody, okay, we don't go that way. <laughs> <laughs> we can just leave them there. And Your tactical fun. expertise always astounds us, Tyler. <laughs> well, you don't have to sing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the chains that's are... are pause. Okay. Can you please stop picking fights with things I can't eat? <laughs> I was just going to check out the chain. I didn't know it was going to attack. That quitter talk, Jackson. <laughs> That's quitter talk. <laughs> um, okay, so Jackson's on the other side, right? He moved, right? Uh, you guys are all essentially close to each other at this point. All, all on the same side? I'm yeah. just wondering how much room we've got to move around. A lot. You've got, got a lot of room. You've got, you got, got a lot of room. Yeah. Around. Okay. Um, Let's try this here. I've got an idea. So, I'll take out my bedroll. Okay. Like my blankets and that. Okay. Uh, somebody else do the same. Okay. We get one person on each end, and we'll try and like fan, see if we can like create enough wind to move this uh, orb of acid. It's a good idea. It's very creative. Good idea. <clears throat> All right, Gans okay, will give you a... someone who's a lot stronger than I am because I can barely hold on to this blanket with my nine strength. You're nine. Okay, um, so, back so let, me just say, let me just say to them that that's a great idea. Let's do that in a minute. But someone should go on the other side of this mist and see if there's another entrance. In case there's another, like the two... You mean the, the, chain, the spike wall, the, the chains no, are trying to follow you no, into? The, no, the other way around. Or are they on both sides of the wall? No, there's only, uh, there was only uh, four of them. It's a circular room. So right yeah. in the middle is the obelisk and the ball. You kind of walked around. You saw chains and the spikes. That's it. There's nothing else. It's there's just a, else. Okay, you, so you see the whole another, room. Yeah, yeah. No no other door. So there's no only door. one obelisk at this, on this side. So there's correct, only three obelisks. Correct. Yes, okay, correct. That's what, correct. I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Okay. All uh, right. Where would you like to fan these two? Let's fan them towards those uh, spikes that tried to make you their mm. bitch. <laughs> All there right. You go. There you go. Um, I have an 18 strength. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. Jackson, Ragnar. Let's make Ragnar do it. Okay. Both right. uh, both you guys roll with advantage, helping each other out. Uh, oh, if we get to roll twice, right? Yeah. So first, roll. Roll's, first roll's 10. Hey, whoa, nice. Thank you. Thank for you, the Jinnum. Cheer. That's yeah. awesome. Woohoo. Second roll, roll is, is 17. 17, okay. And First roll from Ragnar is 11, the second is a 5. Nice, okay. You got a, a pretty good strong strength there, and Ragnar's keeping up on the other end. <laughs> like, it looked funny to me. <laughs> I like Kylo look, getting strangled at, chance. at me funny. <sighs> you start moving uh, as hard as you can on the bedroll. It's a good idea. You generate enough uh, wind. This thing can move. It can be moved by uh, heavy winds and whatnot, but you can... I'm going to give it to you that you can create enough uh, movement with this using your strength to just move it a little bit. It's not like you're going to blow it away and dissipate it, but you can move it slowly, 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 slowly to the obelisk is revealed and the uh, big cloud of both fog and poison or acid at this point are moving towards the other side of the room where the chains are. Is it killing the chains? Uh, I mean, I guess it would be. You can't see. There's fog there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we just leave that over there. Just gonna, just gonna leave it. This it here. takes a while. Like you, you guys, your arms are sore. You've been like pushing hard, pushing hard, fanning this thing the whole time to get it. You know, just more and more and more until it's finally off the obelisk. You guys are worn out. Ask, uh, I guess we gotta ask Jackson to press the digitate some wind. And no, we we yeah. talked about it. He can't do more than a a light uh, fan. Uh, but you, yeah. But we've got the obelisk clear, so I think what we need to do at this point is send everybody, like, do groups of two. So we're not completely, no one's completely by themselves. And send groups of two to each of the obelisks. We'll try pressing it, and we'll even try pressing it all at the same time to see if, like, that locks it into place. Okay. What's the groups? 
Jackson will stay in this room. Okay. Okay, I'll Keep. stay here too. All right. Uh, Ragnar will go with Tessa on the one with the acid creature, and I'll take Gab to the uh, tight squeeze one. Okay. All right, you guys break up into groups of two. You know exactly where the obelisks are, uh, and you um, stay in. While they're walking through to the other side, okay. I'm gonna touch the I'm gonna touch the obelisk so they can relate back if it does anything. Okay. So you we do. Haven't, we haven't verified that it does anything yet. Yeah, of course. No, that's good idea. You reach out and... Jackson's going to stand directly back to back with him. Okay. You guys stand back to back and watch uh, along the room as he touches it. <clears throat> as you touch this one, the, the apex of this lights up a green, uh, a very dull green color, and the object is a hand at the top. Uh, as the guys are walking back to their positions and they walk past the main chamber, the symbol on the... green hand. You see the green hand on the right-hand side of the door. Long story short, I think you stay in verbal communication. You're in groups of two. You know what to do. Everybody touches these things. The uh, symbols above the door light up, and you start to hear a very heavy, dull grinding as the doors slowly open. We figured out the puzzle. You <laughs> and, and Kylo touched everything. <laughs> I, did, I didn't touch the blue one. <laughs> All right, the doors uh, open and sit silently before you. You gather together the gr as a group on the beach. Uh, before you is the water, quietly, unmoving, steady. Uh, at the so far, far... Lock? At the did far... Yeah, the, the yeah, three symbols in place? So yeah, they're on. Okay. They're on. It locked them on. Doors are open before you, dark hallway, uh, off in the distance. <clears throat> okay, so we have a Kraken in front of us, and we have a boat. Well, That's it looks correct. like the boat was specifically designed to get through here, though. So okay. maybe using this boat will be okay. Yeah, it's about 150 feet in the in the roughly, uh, yeah. Right. Okay. So if we do the raft. <laughs> yeah, Jackson will ask Tess if he was able to detect like the speed difference between the boats. Uh, oh, okay. She will say like the uh, the the basic uh, the basic boat is very uh, small, right? It can only hold four people. It's like a little single-masted dinghy type thing, right? Uh, she says <clears throat> it has oars and it would only go as fast as as we'd want to go. Um, obviously, the sail's going to do no good down here unless your prestidigitation can generate just enough maybe to give us a slight gentle push so we sail over the water without disturbing anything too much. Or we could try to row, but we would stir up the water. She's giving out ideas kind of thing. You're asking her, she's telling you what she thinks. <clears throat> How big is the other boat? Uh, the big one, big one, is a 24-foot long 15-person uh, with five sets of oars. So we can do this in one trip and risk drawing attention to that Kraken. Or we can ferry people across. Now, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's four comfortably. So what they mean is, say you were on the sea and you were going on a voyage. Four people are fine. Uh, six people in this to cross a little thing, you're fine, right? You're just standing. Oh, okay. You're standing. You're not sitting. Yeah. In that case, does everyone want to risk it? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, because if we leave anybody behind, a mind flare could come and snatch yeah. them. Yeah. Safety in numbers. Yeah. Even if it's cracking. All right, is the vote for the boat? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. You speak to command. Jackson speaks the command word. The boat unfolds uh, into the water, though causing too much of a disturbance, and just sits there. Everybody climbs aboard the little boat, and a suggestion from Tessa was to use press the digitation or something like that instead of the oars. What is your actual plan? Go ahead and try it. Higher strength to row us through. Yeah, so I guess it's me and Ragnar, or Jackson and me, or Jackson and Ragnar. Well, Jackson's going to keep his eye on the water, so Ragnar and I look do that. Okay, so wind or oars, we're saying oars? Yep. I guess we're going to have to, right? Can he generate enough wind with his... She's air? saying, well... He said it was the equivalent of what was it, a little fan? Yeah, like 
just they a small just fan. Fan to your face. Like oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. All right, so I have to be oars. Okay. All right, how do you want to? Well, I'll give you a quick idea then, just in general. How do you want to roll? Hard and fast? <laughs> do you want to go slow and non What do you want to do here? Uh, strong and steady. Okay, yeah. All right. So, so lo long strides. Okay. All right. Instead well, of. You want to keep him in the rhythm? Okay, so, it's, instead of breaking it down. Is playing us a, a rhythm. <laughs> our sea shanty. <laughs> Instead of playing uh, or doing individual, we don't need individual things at this point. Uh, somebody roll a group initiative on your end. I'll roll one on my end. We're going to do ship versus water. We'll have the guy that's watching the water roll. <laughs> <laughs> or is your initiative garbage? Yeah, that's why it should be someone else. <laughs> I All think right. his initiative is garbage. Who's got the highest initiative? I got a plus three. Plus two. Ragnar's is also a plus two. Let's make the rogue do it. Yeah, what's uh, Gans, Gans? For initiative? Gans is a high dex. Uh, oh, wow. 19. 19. There we go. All right. <clears throat> you, you guys are first. And basically, you get the ship going in the water, give it a little push, get in there, and then the two of you are going to start uh, working those oars to move. Um, so it's, if there's... I'm just going to say if there's battle, we're out of the battle, probably, because we're rowing. Yeah, you guys should be on the, Likely. On the oars. Oh, All right. Oh, yo, oh, <laughs> oh, like for me. You're both strong enough characters. We don't need to roll individually for the oars, and we're only going across about 150 feet. You start hitting those oars uh, within rhythm to start moving. You broke the surface of the water in a kind of semi-violent way. You're not thrashing around, but you're, you're stirring it up pretty good. Uh, creature will... Uh, uh, appear from the water at the far end over in the, the deep black water and start coming towards you. Um, you don't have that far to go to get across. Can you see what it is? Uh, all you can see at this point, uh, you can see 60 feet out into darkness, no issue there, but it doesn't come out of the water. You can just see the edge of a ridge, kind of like a uh, slimy back uh, and a bunch of tentacles. When the tentacles come up, you can see there's about uh, 15 of them in total as a come out of the water how big are we thinking here uh probably large okay probably large the tentacles are each large oh the tentacles themselves uh look like they could reach out i'm going to give you some game terms about 15 feet but the creature itself is probably large under the water so is it, is it bigger than the thing we just fought or like the the thing with the sides for arms oh probably eh, no probably not that big oh okay <laughs> I'm going to let out with a minor illusion the bellow of a dragon turtle. Hmm. Nice. Okay. All right. What do I have to rule for this one? Uh, if it interacts with it, so trying to figure out what it is, that kind of thing, uh, it gets an intelligence saving throw. Okay. Fair enough. Two. <laughs> No, he believes it. All right. <laughs> Round yeah, one. There's a dragon turtle nearby, and he should get them. It's a great idea. Round one, you guys push that in there, start rowing. Creature comes up out of the water and hisses and starts coming out towards where you guys' boat is. Bard has a good idea. Makes the sound of a, a large predator dragon turtle. Thing fails to save, thinks about it, kind of pauses. You see it uh, momentarily paused. Your turn, you continue to row and move the boat across the shore. Uh, it's not that far to go, you're almost there. Creature's turn, he's going to momentarily retreat Does under the last? water. A minute. Yeah. a minute, okay. We'll momentarily kind of pull back and under the water. It's not that much longer until you guys are able to get there. You're going hard and fast in a boat. I'm not going to look into speeds and anything like that, but you can clear 100 and cut something feet in a couple rounds, I'm sure. Yeah. Make yeah. your way to the far end. Ship shh, comes up on the gravel shore. Everybody jumping out? Yep. And Jackson will return the boat to a box. Oh, do I get to save every round? No. Oh, I have to wait. Oh, the 10 minutes. Okay. All right. One minute. One minute. I'm sorry. 10 rounds. I apologize. If you use your action to examine the sound each round, ah, ha, ha. I get a new save. All right. So the second. Cast magic missile. <laughs> uh, 12. Nope. Okay. 
All right. Uh, ship comes up on shore. What was Jackson going to do? Turn back, back into a box. box. Oh, okay. Speak the command word. Well, get everybody off it or keep them on while you turn it into a box. <laughs> oh, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> and compact and crush them all down. <laughs> all right. Everybody gets off. You turn it back into a box. Pick it up. Yep. All right. Creature's turn. Ha <laughs> ha. 15. 15 is what you need. All right. As you're on the shore, he turns it back into a box and picks it up. You see the water split again at the far end. You hear more of a, a th uh, thunderous movement, and the tentacles come up, start coming back towards where you are. Run for the door, guys. <laughs> run for the door? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, everybody as runs. A, as a group, we'll run for the door. Run for the door, make your way into the door, boom, down into the, the hallway. You can hear behind you uh, thrashing against the door. For a few minutes, until it grows quiet. What's behind this door? Hallway. You're in a darkened hallway. So you're making your way down. You do go down, same thing, a gravelly, kind of sandy floor, until again, you find your feet back on worked stone. I want to give you one thing here. Number 40. All right. Because it's almost 1 o'clock, we play from 10 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. You are in a hallway. Entering the hallway where it starts to turn back to stone, you see some light in the distance. You walk for a while before the hallway becomes lit by braziers running the length of the hall, both on the right and the left. Each brazier stands next to a 4-foot tall square column uh, with a stone statue upon it of a spherical creature with a large central eye and many <laughs> eye stalks extending uh. from its body. <laughs> you know we're level three, right? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> level means nothing. Clearly. Ask a Jackson. His uh, group fought a god at level two. I'm yeah. to go for you, Jackson. <laughs> We're not dead. <laughs> well, you're the only one that we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are dead. Yeah. Oh, before I go help. any further, I'm getting my dragon shirt back on. Oh, oh yeah, here's, here's your shirt. Clear and pop in the collar. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you have a radiant glow to you uh, now. Did that? Uh, did you put some of that water on your face or something? <laughs> you instantly, yeah. Just my natural musk. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I'm sure it's a it must be a shirt of uh, charisma mm. plus, right? So after your um, <laughs> after your defeat of the giant uh, guardian creature, uh, making your way down, solving the puzzle of these obelisks and escaping from this tentacle horror under the water, you find yourself in a hallway with statues <laughs> of beholders. Well, they're only statues, so what, what, what's beyond them? Is it uh, like this is a hallway going how far? Off into the distance. And it's it's lit, right? Is the hallway lit all the way? Mm -hmm. uh, do we see any past the, behold, past the beholder statues? Actually, is there anything written on the wall by the beholders? You could make your way over to the wall. I'm not touching anything. <laughs> ah, damn it. <laughs> and look at the statues. You look, uh, Kylo, specifically over at the statues. You can see an inscription on, uh, on them. Uh, it seems to be... Coward. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be uh, repeated throughout the statues, uh, as if the statue um, is similar in almost every instance. And it says, Zer Mi Skazi. Do not repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what that means? Yeah, there we go. Who you asked, Tess? Yeah. She'll say, that's his name. Oh. The Beholder's the, name or the Mind Flayer's name? The Beholder's name. This is his domain now. So we're not in the same... Not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Gans will say, <clears throat> I knew there were guardians down here. That beast was one of them, and that was his area. He talked of a Mind Flayer. Uh, I guess he had his. Now we're in the lair of the Beholder. 
prepared, gentlemen. It will be not easy going ahead. Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> yeah. And that's where we're holder like platinum. Yeah. Of platinum. <laughs> that's what we're gonna call it this week. So next week we will be going uh, into the layer oh, of the yeah. beholder. Well, that is like. <sighs> so uh, here's the thing: Are we taking a short rest here? Sure. Whatever you want to do, you decide. As, uh, long rest might be smart back, enough. Right? Long Just, rest? Or? Yeah, it's only on long rest. I get my stuff back. I did get a shit What if we me. feed it Kylo? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not lunch. And you probably taste the same as I do because you're a half elf. <laughs> I did get the shit kicked out of me. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so should, we should do the long rest on our on our characters. If you guys want to do the long rest, you'll be camping for eight hours essentially in this hallway. Uh, you're pretty sure the creature you know, is far behind you. Um, you don't know what's ahead of you, but you're in an area that looks pretty clear. Eh, maybe. So far. And you can <laughs> and maybe well take some shifts and rest. So at the beginning of the next game, you will have your spells back. Um, any uh, ability damage will be healed. Unfortunately, your weapons and armor are still damaged. They'll have to be repaired outside of the dungeon by a smith or something like that. Unless you have a repair spell. I don't know. Um, and uh, hit points healed up as well so okay sound good sounds good yeah. all right I'm man gonna take, i'm gonna hit take a long rest then there you go all right well thanks everybody for coming by and uh hope you come back next week we're gonna have a little movie at the end we get a little outro we'll play for you enjoy that and then uh i'll be around in the discord if anybody wants to hang out for a while other than that have a good night i will mute everybody and uh play us out i'll come back I'll let the bard play us out. Woohoo! Okay. Yeah, let the, <laughs> the bard play us out. <laughs> I don't think the bard uh, knows how to rap. <laughs> are we uh, are we raiding anybody? Uh, uh, do, oh yeah, sure. I'm sorry. Do you want to raid someone? Who who's up? Who do we got? Uh, uh, Nathan. Got, uh, do you want to get do Nathan have it up here? Um, what yeah. Do does do? everybody feel like? Uh, let's ask the group. Everybody feel like uh, going and seeing gaming, or you want to see another D and D? squad we got uh D, D passive perception we have nathan he is a call of duty player uh that we know you go see some call of duty war zone or do we want to get uh, b dub and blue again and get wasteland three give him the return we have a vote for D. &D. D, &D? all right anybody say otherwise if not, we are going to passive Let me perception. Do a, uh, you want to do passive perception, or you want to do somebody we haven't met before? Well, we can give the respect back to uh, B Dub and Blue if you want. Oh, you can. I was just gonna say there's a few. Uh... Oh, you want to get somebody new? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Who's a Who's a group okay. that's doing? We got uh, I am Tiny Panda that's got six viewers. <laughs> I'm not saying booby. <laughs> 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 Uh, they got six years. We got another one that's. Oh, that's the thanks for watching. Looks like those people are done on K Price. Okay. Um, passive perception has nine people watching. Well, let's grab somebody. Who do we want to get? Well, session ten chatter prime discord, uh, Medjin Bo. That sure. Three Sounds three good. Viewers. What's okay. uh? What's their name? M A J I N B E A U underscore. All right, let me get it one more time from you, Horace. Right, sorry. Educational and. Educational? Uh, Where are educational we going? Educational and adventure mode. <laughs> okay, give it to me one more time. I think, well, let me go check to see what these guys are doing. Uh, we gotta go quick. We don't wanna lose everybody. We're already, so already dropping Start out. doing your outro and we'll pick it. All right, fair enough. Oh, yeah, they got sounds and everything. Yeah, they're doing, uh, they're doing the thing. So. All right. Spell it out for me. Spell it out for me, please. M A J I N B E A U underscore. I got it. Okay. All right. We're going to the raid. Thank you guys if you're coming by. Enjoy movie time. Movie time. Mute everybody up. Mute everybody up.
innocence lost No, no one is immune We all will know loss When we're under the pain Oh shit. Dude, thank you so much for the raid. Again. The party of eight. Uh, hype begins to pick up a little bit of a, a quicker pace. Thank you. Super, super big appreciate it. Turning back and looking at the group. Thanks so much, man. We have to hurry, but we also have to because this is obviously Test us, love. Test us. Of love. Hey, Thanks guys. so much, guys. Oh, there you are. Okay. They said lot tons of love, so. Yep, I hear you. Sorry, I was trying to hear them and hear you. 